internet, what is up? Well, here we are. It's another Monday is upon us, and we are cruising right along. I don't even know what the fuck is happening with the summer. The summer is evaporating right in front of my eyeballs, and I don't, I don't, I, like, we're at warp speed here. I don't know about anybody else, but, like, it's flying by. So I hope you're taking time to pump the brakes and get out and enjoy the good weather and enjoy the summer and have a great time with your friends and family and go on some good adventures. So with that said, let's jump into the business aspect of what we're doing over here and let's talk about Patreon. Come on over, check out our Patreon channel. We got some cool things going on on Patreon. We got three uh, tiers on Patreon. We've got the $10 a month entry level. That's it. That's around the campfire. So that what that gets you is some live Q&A. That gets you Sticker of the Month Club. And that gets you uh, DM access directly to me. So come check that out. That's tier one, 10 bucks a month. Tier two is called the Team Room. And that gets you live Q&A, gets you Sticker of the Month Club, and it gets you a free hoodie. So if you're so inclined and you like hoodies, like I live in a hoodie, like that's kind of like my, my go-to almost year round because I live up in the mountains and it gets pretty chilly at nighttime. So up at elevation, temperatures getting around 40, 50 degrees, even in the summertime. So it's chilly enough to put on a hoodie every once in a while. Or if you live in a place that we live in, in Wyoming, like sometimes it's snowing on in the first week of June, like it was this year. So get a, get yourself a hoodie, people. Come on over, sign up for the team room, get yourself a free hoodie. Okay, tier three, 50 bucks a month. What does that get you? Okay, that gets you an invitation to the summer symposium where you can come out for three days and fly fish with us and our good friend Cam Fields and do some training. We're going to do some shooting. We're going to do some hiking. We're going to do some cool stuff. And we're going to hang out, get to know each other. And then that gives you access to a free course for me, either a low light course or a force on force course later on down the road. And that gets you a free hoodie and free sticker packs and live Q&A. And some, usually some one-on-one mentorship. I just throw that in. My people, my people that are paying that tier, they reach out to me, they hit me up all the time, and I'm always like Johnny on the spot answering questions. So people, if you want a little bit of mentorship and you want all that other good stuff, come on over, sign up for the channel and check us out on YouTube. We're on YouTube now. We've got some videos up on YouTube. Go check out the YouTube channel, at Lone Element. We're on Twitter, at Lone Element. We're on the gram, at Lone Element underscore actual. So swing by and then uh, also... Give us, a, give us a review, people. Like Jump on iTunes or jump on uh, Spotify and uh, give us, give us a re- write us a review. And if we suck, that's cool. Just tell us why we suck, okay? Because I'm, I'm into self-improvement. I'm into getting better at the things that I like to do. And I'm not afraid of failing and I'm not afraid of fucking up. So if I am fucking up, tell me and tell me why and be descriptive. I'll, chances are I'll look at it and if it's an objective point of view and I can look at it and be like, yeah, they're right. We could do better at that. We will. We will We will do better at it. We will be better at it and do better at it because that's what life's about. So with that said, uh, I had the opportunity to run into a really phenomenal, awesome human being while I was out interviewing Matt. And it's a f- friend of his. And she dropped by the gym while we were in there hanging out, recording, doing our thing. And uh, we, we basically, she sat down and we had a really cool conversation. And she's a really awesome down-to-earth dynamic human and very articulate, very intelligent. We had a fucking awesome conversation. And, you know, in doing so, I asked her for her social handle and she gave it to me and I jumped on there and she is a fucking wildling from north of the wall for sure. So she's Native American Indian. She is a fantastic uh, top-tier tattoo artist and uh, a fantastic painter and a uh, runs a gun like a house on fire and... Uh, jumps off cliffs, tight ropes. So she's fucking not your average run-of-the-mill human. So in seeing that, I was like, okay, I definitely have to have a conversation with this person, and I'm so glad that I did. So I reached out to her, and I was like, hey, Marissa, let's sit down. Let's have a conversation. And she was totally into it, and I was like, yeah, absolutely. So we did. So enjoy this next episode of the Lone Element Podcast with our good friend, our new friend, Marissa Laren. Enjoy. Things are getting tougher when you can't get the top off the bottom of the barrel. Why don't bet we're all about the future now? Look at fucking now. I know that I don't know. I know that I don't know nothing. I know that I don't know. I know that I don't know. Okay. Well, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. So I always find it amazing, and it's just by it's by sheer luck. And you're not the only person that I have been on a mission to podcast 
with a friend of mine, and then I bumped into one of their mutual friends who I have no idea who they are, and then I'm like, hey, person, nice <laughs> to meet you. Who are you? And then they tell me, and I'm like, oh, shit, this person's really <laughs> rad. Like, I, I should interview them, too, because they've got, like, a really cool background and story. So, yeah, so I'm out here visiting my friend Matt Vincent, and I run into a Marissa who shows up, <laughs> and I was like, holy shit. I jumped on your social, and I was like, fuck, this human is – this human's fucking jumping off a of fucking cliffs tied to a rope. That's fucking pretty awesome. Not many people do that. So Especially by themselves. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So did you did you rig that whole thing up and just do it yourself or, or uh, were you th- Well, I um I saw a video like I don't even know how many years ago, like mm-hmm. before I think Instagram was even like big, but I saw an internet video and I grew up outside of well, in Colorado, but like outside mm-hmm. of Moab of someone jumping off this cliff and it looked like just like rock climbing hooks and rope. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I want to do that eventually. And then like years later I saw a friend of mine did it. So I asked him, I'm like, Hey, how did like, how did you set this up? And he never got back to me. So I figured it out and I met people who do it and then messaged them and asked him, I was like, Hey, I'm going to be in Moab and I really want to jump off and do this. Can we like set it up? And they were like, sure. So I went out there by myself and then met them and they hooked it up. And then I harnessed in and yeeted myself off a cliff. Sent it. Sent it. Like a champion with yeah. like zero hesitation. Zero. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> mostly zero hesitation. Yeah. I mean, it didn't look like there was any hesitation on the video. I, I was felt like, like if I waited too, like you can't really wait long. I'm like, if mm-hmm. I just go, I can't go back. Mm-hmm. So you might as well just... Just do it. <laughs> yeah, but you did it a couple times. You didn't just do it once. Yeah, did I did it twice. Yeah. Yeah. Second time I went for two front flips. The first time mm-hmm. I only did one. Yeah, I was going through the feed and I like, I'm like, oh, she's a fucking f- awesome artist and y- she's a tattooist. And then I was like, oh shit, she, she's rock climbing. And then I clicked <laughs> on the video and, and then you're like, ah, here I am. <laughs> and you just f- sent it off this cliff and you <laughs> dove head first off. And I was like, whoa. Yep. Yeah, I was like, I definitely need to talk to this human. <laughs> we definitely need to have a, a chat. So, yeah, so thank you for accepting my invitation, super short notice. Thanks and for asking. Yeah, yeah, and then let's, yeah. I mean, Matt, the one thing that I can count on with Matt and Bonnie is they always keep really amazing humans in their circle. They don't hang out with, like, shitty, boring people. So I just knew by you walking in the door and being, like, <laughs> high five Matt and being like, what's up, and just sitting down and, like, starting to chop it up i mean we had a great conversation we talked about a lot of cool stuff for for a few for a couple hours yeah it was a couple hours a couple hours and then that was the other thing too i was like wow well she's got some great insight on some things and like we had a really awesome conversation just between the three of us so i was like okay this will this will be a good podcast so yeah i appreciate you accepting invitation short notice and just cannonballing into the pool yeah no i appreciate it always like humbled if people want to hear me talk about anything (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the other thing, too, is like doing a deeper dive on your social and like reading some of the really in-depth things that you've like written attached to your photos was really also another point where I was like, this human's got some real she's got some really great life experience. She's been through some cool things and some shitty things, which I think, you know, Matt and I was talking, we always have deep conversations about like suffering and the value of it. Because there is a value in it. And people, you know, sometimes don't have that lens. They they have a victim, like, poor me mentality. And realistically, like, f- I'm a big advocate. And, and I've got, and all of us have done it to a certain extent. Like, I have for sure gotten my ass kicked in life. And I'm like, oh, poor me. This fucking sucks. Why did this happen to me? I've definitely had those moments in my life. And then, you know, as you mature and you go through life and you get older and then, you know, going through the military and, you know, doing the things that I've done, I've like, I've discovered that there's a really a good benefit to some type of suffering because you don't, your lens does not change substantially, nor does your perception unless you get your ass kicked a little bit. I think there's no greater lesson or teaching than suffering. I think there's a strong correlation between people who have been through traumatic, horrible, or like tests Um, And, like, their character afterward. Like, some of the best people I've ever met, they never really had easy lives. And I think there's a reason for that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the most successful humans I know have had 
their asses kicked pretty good. Yep. So, yeah, they're like a lot of the, the, you know, the people that inspire me, you know, Matt, no exception. He's like, dude, like that whole journey of him, like having nine knee surgeries, losing his professional athletic career. And then like, and I was with him for a good bulk of that. You know, like I met him years ago and I met him like when he was like, I think he was like at surgery six or something. So I went through like three, three other surgeries, you know, like cheerleading him on. And then like, he was finally like fucking can't do it anymore. Got to get a knee replacement. So crazy. And watching him battle through that and kind of like document that whole thing across his YouTube channel was really inspiring. And like, those are the type of people that I want to surround myself with are the people that like have gotten their ass kicked that know what, the ugly side of life's all about mm -hmm. and they know how to like bounce back and deal with like that a, a little bit we have to have perspective like people who yeah. don't have perspective because you've only had like good things like mostly good things happen to you that's why they like right facilitate and like create problems because they've never had real ones but people who have had real problems have a lot of perspective of like things could be so much worse <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i don't need to create fake problems i've had real ones and like things are okay but i could also make them better so yeah yeah, things can certainly always get worse. For sure. To a level that you can't even oh, comprehend yes. can get worse. Yes. So, so yeah, okay, so cool. Like, well, so then, like, b let's back up a little bit now and introduce yourself and, and talk about, like, who you are and, like, what you're, what you got going on. Oh, who I am. That's a, well, my name is Marissa Loren. Mm -hmm. um, I'm an artist, a tattoo artist. I don't know how to answer the who I am question. Yeah, I mean, you you d humans are definitely more encompassing <laughs> yeah. than like what their what yeah. their trade craft is for, for sure. sure for sure. But yeah, the uh, yeah, so we can we can start with that. But I am dying to hear your story and however you want to structure it in terms of like kind of give me like where you grew up, okay, and then how you got into art, okay, and then because I'm assuming the art stuff started before tattooing, or do I have that backwards? No, yeah, you're correct. Well, I mean, like I don't know when did you start coloring as a kid? Yeah, when I was like. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say knee high to a grass. I just didn't stop. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah, kind of where you grew up, how you got into art, and then some of the bumps along the road to like get where you're at, and then um, you know, like some of your however comfortable you are with sharing some of your trauma. I'll 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 share away. I'm okay, pretty good. open yeah. book. Um, yeah. yeah. You'll find that like I have some other female guests on the podcast that have been very transparent and very like don't give five yeah. fucks by the way this is like not a family show so okay perfect feel <laughs> feel free to be as you as as you i usually you try to edit because sometimes like when i start getting passionate about stuff i curse a lot more and then i'll like listen to myself back like if i have other podcasts i've done i'm like you really need to stop saying the word fuck so much <laughs> no i don't think <laughs> if you go back and listen to some of my other stuff like i in my handle like People and people ask me, they're like, "What do you do?" And I say, "I'm a professional profaneteer." Oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> because I, I use the word "fuck" and I use the word "cunt" very fl I love flagrantly. The word cunt. <laughs> okay, we're gonna get along so good. We're gonna get along so I'm good. mostly like seeing people's reaction when you say it because they like are like off put at first or like especially females. Yeah. I'm like it's a descriptive word and like bitch won't do the word. Right. And so it's. It's so funny, like, how American, how adverse Americans oh, are to it. yeah. Because I spent a lot of my time doing, like, counter-drug stuff in Afghanistan. I spent a lot of my time working with... Like, Brits. Brits and Aussies. Aust yeah, I have a ton of Australian friends, and they all say cunt. They have a, they have a, they have a, they have a grasp for that word that is unparalleled. <laughs> like, there's, you know, and one of my good friends, I'm going to her wedding. My two friends are getting married, and she's, she's Aussie. And she's been living in the States for a while, but I'm going to their wedding in December. And, uh... She is a professional profaneteer as well, uses the word cunt very amazingly. And she educated me further, d like deeper down the rabbit hole on there's, there's just cunts. And those are just people in general. Those are just people in general. Yeah, just anybody could be a cunt. And it's just not, it's not even referred to as a derogatory thing. You're just a cunt. You're uh -huh. just like a random cunt. It's like person. Yeah, you're yeah. just a person. Yeah. yeah. Cunt is a person in Australia. And then uh, in Australia. And then... Uh, <laughs> There's your good cunts who are like your mates, you know, people you people you hang out with. Then there's your uh, your top cunt. Oh. And then if you're a turd, you're a shit cunt. Hmm. There's shit cunt humans, and those are the those are the ones that I think they refer to like as you as we use the word here in For, America, yeah. where you're like you're a fucking cunt. 
Like that's fire. That they call those shit cunts. So mm-hmm. like the word cunt. So it's very refreshing to find a uh, a, a female in America that will use that word frag- flagrantly as because I I do it all the time and people get so bent about it. I just the facial expressions every mm-hmm. time just like they don't know how to handle it and I'm like yeah. it's a word. Like I, I've never been a big fan of like giving words more power. Like it's context for me. So yeah. like. You can use any bad word or good word you want, and it depends on how you're using it. So I just think it's funny people's reactions. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, it's hilarious. But I'm like, sometimes I'm like, yeah, like it's very descriptive. Like they were being cunty, so yeah, I'm just I'm explaining how they were acting. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then I've got myself in like situations in the past of dating where the other human was not well equipped to deal with me, and. Uh, hence why i have no one but they 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 were highly offended by me just being like hey like did you have to be that cunty about that or did you need to be that cunty to that (laughs) to that person about that or or my other favorite one is like why are you cunting out right now oh that's hilarious and like heads will spin around yeah girls are weird about that Mm -hmm. word yeah super But like maybe if you weren't being such a cunt (laughs) (laughs) yeah correct yeah yes absolutely yeah Okay, yeah, we're gonna get along just fine. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah. So it's a, it's a word that I, that I, it's in common usage. So feel feel absolutely free to be as, all right, normal you as you want. Unfiltered. Let's have unfiltered. I mean, Marissa. I'm mostly unfiltered. I'm okay. just like I'm like trying to be cognizant of like I don't know, not saying fuck that much when I'm like because I hear it back and it's just like oh too much. This is like filler at that point. Mm-hmm. It's like saying um too many times. I, yeah, I agree. Which I also do, so. Yeah, I try not to. I try not to filter myself. I just let it I just let it go. That's fair. It's not a family show, so. Deal. All right. Get after it. Okay. Okay, so Marissa back in the day. <laughs> All little right. Mar- little Marissa, coloring book. Ugh. Yeah. Do I have coloring books? I don't know. My, um, so I grew up in a small farm town in western Colorado uh, on a farm. Which was? Um, Fruta, Colorado. Okay. Um, so it's like on the border of Utah. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I was like homeschooled for a bit. Christian Baptist homeschooled, mm-hmm. uh, did 4-H, showed horses. Um, I've been drawing pretty much, yeah, my whole life. I started taking like fine art painting classes when I was eight and the cutoff or like the age limit was 10, mm. but they let me in. Um, I stopped doing art for, not like completely but like didn't really care in high school I did it like in class Mm -hmm. and in college I started drawing again for myself and then I started my tattoo apprenticeship when I was 19 and then I've been tattooing since 31 let's see what else (laughs) that's like how I got here I guess (laughs) so tattooing so then okay so you were you're doing all these things on the ranch. By the way, my f- my mom's side of the family grew- is from Walden. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm very familiar with that. Yeah. Area the are the that neck of the woods. Yeah. That whole northern w- Colorado, southern Wyoming. Yeah. So, yeah. So then, yeah, my mom got sick of like small town Walden, and my grandmother's sister had a Vespa scooter shop in L.A. So she left Walden, went out to L.A. Not very many people know this. I'm gonna I'm gonna go <laughs> ahead and I'm gonna throw myself under the bus. Okay. My 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 dad, at the, he, him and my mom were high school sweethearts, and he was like, he was like, I'm not going to L.A. with you. I'm staying here, small town, cow town, Colorado, you know, ranch town, Colorado. And so she left. She's like, fuck this, I'm done with it. Went, left. We're in the scooter shop. He chased her out there like six months later, knocked her up. She still was like, fuck you, I'm not going back. <laughs> Stayed in L.A., had me in L.A., so I'm technically a California resident oh, or yeah. California native. And then had me and like li- lived there for nine months, and then was like, nope, I can't raise kids in LA, which I'm I'm actually grateful for. And so then he was working on the oil field at the time in up in Wyoming, and she moved up there with him. They got married, and uh, and then I grew up in in Wyoming. So yeah, I'm I'm familiar with that whole geographic My area. My parents met in California, hmm. and they moved to Meeker. Uh, um, yep. Yeah. Um, my dad was like in a hunting and they that's wanted it. to get away or some shit. And, yeah. and that's where I was born. So similar, similar. Yeah. That's a little blink your eye town and you'll miss it too. In between, what is it like? Uh, it's in between Craig and rifle. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah, there's like 800 people and like a thousand sheep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's yeah. about what it's like there. Yeah. 
I mean, that's almost like the state of Wyoming. There's like <laughs> yeah. 500,000 people and 600,000 pronghorn antelope. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So then you, you grew up on the ranch doing yeah. the farm thing. Farm thing. And then you. I were, left when I was 17. Oh, cool. And, yeah. went, and then where did you go from there? Well, I mean, I graduated high school at 16. Mm-hmm. So I went, to, I did a year of college technically when yeah. I was 17. I hated it wasn't really sure what I wanted to do at that. I mean, like, 16 years old, and, like, I just knew I wanted to leave home. I would have left sooner if I fucking could have. Went to, like, a community college for my first semester. Hated it. Was so miserable. Went to a state college the next semester for art, because I was, like, at that point, I was, like, wanting to get tattooed. Didn't really think of it as, like, a career path. Obviously, from, like, a small town, too. Like, not a lot of people have tattoos, never even heard of it being like a real career choice and Mm -hmm. like I I liked art but I was like didn't want to be a starving artist so I knew I wanted to get tattoos thought about maybe doing it just wasn't really sure how so I left college because like doing art in school is so stupid like it's literally pointless and I was having to pay for it myself and I'm like I'm wasting money doing like value scales and like color wheels essentially Mm -hmm. For, for what? Like, this isn't going to get me a job. Like, unless you're going to teach art, really. Like, you don't need an art degree. <laughs> yeah, there were some things that I struggled with when I went back to design school. Well, first of all, being a 38-year-old dude, c- combat vet, going to school with, mm. like, 18 and 20-year-old, like, foreign kids. I feel like design school is different. Like, if you're going for, like, graphic design or design, like, if it has, like, a specific application, but, like, a fine art degree... Is something no mm. one needs. We still had to do the. We s- yeah, you're yeah. correct. Yeah. We still had to do the the same stuff though. Where I'm like, I'm here to like. I was here there to be a, learn how to be a maker. Yes. You know, but it's not same same. No. They're very art driven there. So like, we had still had to do like the color value stuff, and then like the dr- drawing, you know, pyramids and and mm. cylinders and you know primitives as we call them. Mm-hmm. You know, like you got to draw primitives and and shade and scale them and position them and perspective them properly and just like i'm like i'm just i want to learn how to use the laser cutter. could somebody <laughs> please just teach me how to use the laser cutter so yeah i get i get what exactly what you're saying it's yeah yeah it was weird I, mm-hmm. I, I mean i liked art history and stuff but i just was like it didn't it wasn't practical it didn't really make sense um i feel like college makes sense for people if you are going for something very specific like i think it's a waste of time and money just to go for a degree you'll never use. Like, why Why would you do that? Right. Like, so, I like, I mean, I'm a big fan of, like, trade schools. But, like, yeah, if you're going to be an accountant or a lawyer, school makes sense. Like, you, those are things you would need to learn to use in your job. But, right. like, for an art degree, I'm like, that literally doesn't matter. No mm-hmm. one, no artist ever has been like, can you please show me your degree before you sell this painting? Right. No, ever. Ever. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so I left college and then worked for a bit, like, waitressing, bartending, saving money. And then um, there was like one artist in Colorado that I wanted to teach me and he was the one I wanted to do my tattoos to. So I like scheduled an appointment, 19, get my first tattoo and like started talking to him um, about an apprenticeship and he really just did not want anything to do with me. He was or, like, uh, no. or anyone like yeah. it was it was interesting like he he was he's so talented I, I, he's such a good person like we're s- still very close but um he was like working at another shop and he had kind of taken this artist who was the owner like under his wing because he mm-hmm. had been tattooing a lot longer than the owner and he kind of got fucked over so he left and opened like a little tiny private studio and it, so that's when i met him and he like didn't want to work with another person definitely didn't want to take someone under his wing again like he felt like very burned and I just kind of, like, wore him down mm. <laughs> and <laughs> bothered him enough to where he was like, fine, I'll give you a job. Like, show up on Monday, sweep the floors. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah. Clean the toilet, take he, out the trash. Yeah, like, and then, like, read this book and, like, watch me tattoo, draw every day. So I did, like, a year um, of not tattooing at all. So it was, like, a two-year apprenticeship, one year of not touching a machine, not tattooing. And then, like, then I started tattooing on, like, we tried, like, fake skin for a while and then people who are willing obviously which is really easy to find i'm always so surprised how often people are willing to get garbage tattoos especially if they're free i'm like you know i don't know what i'm doing they're like don't care free cool yeah do whatever i'm like okay <laughs> um yeah. yeah and then like tattoo the simpsons on my forearm real quick yeah 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 so uh yeah so that's how it started and then so you worked did you 
grow into that a spot in that shop and work in that shop yeah. for um, yeah a, a three year three four years um i ended up doing a stupid tattoo show like two three years into tattooing um and then at, right after that like before it aired i moved to florida um and then i moved to vegas after that and then here to missouri Okay, I feel like you're skipping over some pretty <laughs> substantial. I think you're, you're. We're just flying through some pretty substantial. Uh, okay, so like, so the then fucking show is so gay. Okay, so th- so you're on this tattoo show. Yeah, I did Ink Masters. Um, I was like super super new. Did you win? No, fuck no. I shouldn't have even been there. Like, mm. I think back, like, I didn't want to do the show. What, like, the year I did it. They had, well, before my season, it mm-hmm. was, like, just trash tattooers, and they were getting, like, a lot of negative feedback about mm-hmm. it. So, they're, like, we finally need to get, like, better artists. So, they had asked, um, like, people who had been judges and stuff, um, pillars of the industry to, like, recommend people. Right. And I had been recommended by a friend of mine, and I was, like, literally, like, two, two and a half years into tattooing. Like, green. Green as fuck. And um, it was a mentor apprentice season. So they asked me to do it. And they were like, we also want your mentor to come. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really want to do it. but I wanted him to do it. And then we like, I mean, we talked about it. It was like, this kind of an opportunity you kind of have to take. Mm -hmm. So decided to go on that show. And um, God, it was such a fucking nightmare. It was so terrible. I don't tell people like, I know a lot of people know I was on it, but like, I don't. I like never put it in my Instagram. I never really shared it. I definitely didn't capitalize on it like I like some people do. Um, and why not? What was the thing that like? I kept d- you so from- like my biggest <laughs> issue with that whole show is like I it's not a good representation of me mm-hmm. like at all. So like there's like so many things. It's reality TV. Reality. It's air, reality. Air quotations. Yes. Reality. reality. But like before even getting there, they would say stuff like it's so manipulative, but it's like <laughs> before like even getting there, they're like, hey, we have to buy you clothes because you can't have like brand names for copyright issues and stuff. And like, we'll pay for clothes, but like, tell us what you would normally wear. And I'm like, that sounds normal, right? That makes sense. So I'm like, mostly wear like gym clothes when I tattoo like sneakers leggings um hats and they're like okay anything you won't wear and I'm like I won't wear crop tops I won't wear high heels so I like get there and they're like here's some leather pants crop tops and high heels this is your outfit and I'm like what (laughs) never what I and they're like you have to wear it this is your job you signed a contract and they like take pictures of you in all the fucking outfits and to make sure that you, you know, you know, are wearing what you're supposed to wear. And I'm like miserable and hating life. And then like they didn't Immediately like. Immediately pissed. Just, oh, so miserable. And like they didn't like how I talked because another girl on the show had an accent. Um, she's from Arkansas. So like, can you talk with less of an accent? And I'm like, okay. And they um, didn't like. They that. seriously told you that. Uh-huh. And they didn't like that I was sarcastic. Like, I remember the first time I made, like, a sarcastic joke because I'm, like, stress the fuck out. Like, Mm -hmm. they literally control everything, and you're so miserable. You're on, like, house arrest. They take your phone. They, like, don't let you eat until they tell you to. So, like, I made made a joke, and they're like, this is serious, so we need you to be serious. So the whole time I'm, like, can't make jokes, don't know what to fucking do with myself. I'm wearing these ridiculous fucking costume, can't talk like myself. And then I'm doing, like, shitty tattoos, right? Because, like... They don't give you any time to prepare, and I'm like, su- I'm like youngest and least experienced person on the show ever, and I'm like, this is great, everything's great. So I'm like, <laughs> well, I look back and I, wa- I like, yeah, I'm, I didn't even really, I watched it like once, and I like refused to watch it again. But I'm like, it's just not me, like, it's not a good reference. Like, I don't do good tattoos. I don't sound like me. I don't dress like me. Like, eh. but people tend to not hate me on the show, I guess. So that's good. <laughs> okay, so. How did you get that little southern twang that you have? It's not southern. I'm just from the fucking sticks. Mm. I think if you, like, live anywhere that's rural, like, Super. people tend to have country accents. Mm. And I, mine's just thicker than it fucking should be. It's been like that mm. since I was a kid. I took speech therapy classes for a while, though, because, like, some, some of the people in Colorado don't have accents, and some mm. of them do. Like, I know people have thicker accents than I do. Um, they're real podunk. Like, they're fucking rednecks. Um, but then I met other people who talk like normal, Mm -hmm. like they're from fucking Denver, California. 
So I took like some speech classes for a while because I was like the first my, I was homeschooled until middle school. And I remember my first time reading out loud. And I said uh, I, very specifically, I was reading, I was like, up that heel. And they like made fun of me and laughed. And I was like, I didn't know I talked different than other people until right now. <laughs> and fuck. <laughs> they're like what the fuck did you say and i'm like he he they're like on the bottom of your feet and i'm like oh, shit <laughs> so yeah and then eventually i just stopped caring and i'm like oh you can make fun of how i talk it is what it is yeah no, i i i've always i've always like i've never had a problem with it like i've had like several friends i served with were all from like deep south yeah it's yeah. a different type of accent like yeah. i have friends from like Alabama and yeah. I'm like it's totally different accent for or like Texas even like I'm just like I don't know I met people from upstate New York who are bull riders and I'm like how'd you get that accent like mm -hmm. you're from New York it's so country mm -hmm. like almost sounds southern if you can't hear the difference so you're just country country people just country folk yep yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. okay I dig it <laughs> all right so then so then the train wreck that was the tattoo show yeah. and then you after that aired and you decided that you hated every m minute of that then you went to florida? florida so what what took you what opportunity presented itself that caused you to go to florida i saw what your face <laughs> just did i wish this was on youtube right now God, i've got to get my camera set up i saw what your face just did what opportunity is a <laughs> funny word <laughs> yeah. um this is fun um so at that point in my life uh, I guess we like we were gonna have to backtrack a little mm -hmm. bit. I was manipulated into a very abusive relationship with a predator slash sociopath mm. from eighteen, maybe a little bit before seventeen mm -hmm. to twenty three, twenty however old I was when I went to do that show. Um, right before I left to do that show, I had left him essentially because uh, I had found out a bunch of crazy shit and. Um, so I was homeless and Oh, being do not rush through these okay. details, okay? okay. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to need you to just take your foot okay. off the gas pedal <laughs> cuz you're trying to go you're trying to skip through some really really uh, solid gold stuff do here. We are we going to talk about this relationship yes. and all of its glory? Yeah, because okay. I you know what? I read through I, I actually do my research oh, on people. Okay. I took my time to read through a lot of your posts and I I want to hear the story oh. of like my literally my entire life mm -hmm. up until 27 has been abusive relationships so like my parents family um friends i would say is toxic more than a well i don't know i guess it's technically abuse um to a a boyfriend at like 17 18 who mm -hmm. was 11 years older than me so yeah. a predator <laughs> who manipulated me um and I didn't realize it now, but it was like, I was definitely being groomed. Obviously, like, then you don't know. And I, I just thought, like... He was 18 and you were how old? No, he was... I was 17, 18. Okay. He was 29. Okay, yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah, gross. Keep tracking. Fucking disgusting. Mm -hmm. And, like, he had showed interest. So, like, small town. My older sister is six years older than me. So, her boyfriend at the time, it was his friend. So, he was, like, a family friend when I was growing up in high school. Um, and he went to the navy and then he came back and i was like 17 at that time but he had like sh i think now that i look back i'm like he had definitely shown interest when i was like 15 mm. and then at 17 when he's back from the military and he's like 29 or something mm -hmm. gross um pursued me and like at that time i was like i'm not interested you're too old i don't really find you attractive and then like he just kind of it was very manipulative like the way it happened and then a, it was weird and gross. The people, like my f older friends, my family, essentially, like sister and stuff, kept telling mm -hmm. me, like, you should date him. He's so nice. Like, why wouldn't you? And I'm like, well, he's a lot older than me. That's weird. And they're like, no, he's so nice. You should definitely date him. So, like, at that point in my life, I was fat. I, I was an overachiever in college. So my first three months there, I gained, like, 60 pounds. Oh, wow. Killing life. Just. What was your, what was your. Your vice? Yeah, your vice. I'm really good at drinking, really good at eating, and I stopped playing sports. And, like, my body hates me. So, like, my metabolism was just like, fuck you. I quit at mm. 16. And so I gained, like, a ton of weight and with like and really fast. And so, What, what do you think – what, what, what was the trigger for that? Like, why did you get to college and then just, like, 
Or is it just like, I'm free, I can do I whatever think, I want? Or I think like, I just was so active, like, my whole life. Like, yeah. playing, I played sports all year round. Like, yeah. I um, played, uh, perf- or, like, competitive softball pretty much all year round. Mm-hmm. I varsityed all four years. I played uh, varsity golf all four years. I mm-hmm. snowboarded in the winter. Like, I literally was just so active. And then I did, like, sh- showed horses and, like... Yeah, I did all the all the things, and then I got to college, and I quit doing. I didn't play sports anymore. Um, I stopped showing horses. I still snowboarded, but that's it. So it's like winter time, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I just like drank every day and ate like a whole bag of pizza rolls a night, and just terrible. So I just like just gained so much weight super quickly. So I like. So you weren't depressed or anything. You were just oh, like, super depressed. Okay, you oh, were. Okay. S- depressed, suicidal, just like fucked in the head for sure. What was um, causing that? Um. Uh, yeah, don't shortchange us here. Okay. Um. That Let, let's commu- take the whole ride. So, dude, my life is so fucked up. Uh, <laughs> um. That first semester at college. Um. I mean, I was like sexually assaulted. I had a kid break into my dorm room and try to rape me. That was kind of traumatic. The college didn't care when I went and reported them. Oh no one did anything. Oh, my fucking God. What college was this? Uh, it was a community college in, like, Rangeley, Colorado. Oh, There's, gee. like, no Fuck. people there. Okay. Yeah. How did that, how did he, how did you stop them? Oh, dude, th- I honestly think of, like, this, I think about it all the time because I can't remember a, a day that I was there that I wasn't f- so fucking drunk. Like, I literally, that's all I did. Like, I would walk to class. I'd walk back, I'd drink, like, I was, like, that's all we did was drink. That one day, like, I think about it very specifically, is the one day I wasn't, like, super drunk, and I went to sleep, and I think if I had been drunk, things would have been very different, because when I woke up, and he was, like, on top of me and taking my clothes off, like, I freaked the fuck out, because I was, like, cognizant enough to fight him off, and then he left, but I was, like, if I had been drunk and unable to do that, things would have been so much different so i'm like it's like the one day that i just wasn't super fucked up and i'm like i don't know who to thank for that like the universe god or whatever you want to say but (sighs) could have been way worse okay and this was your first year of college first semester like a couple months in yeah yeah okay all right Uh uh-huh okay so then Uh uh-huh fucking a so that that happens and then and then how did was this somebody that you knew that you saw around campus i mean there's like all of 30 kids in the whole freaking campus okay so. so you saw this fucker regularly uh-huh and so then how did that how did those follow-on interactions go oh uh? no they let uh, so he had a brother there too um i went and reported it to the college mm-hmm. and tried to report it to the they didn't do anything or care um but they left and i think maybe that's maybe that was why they're like oh they left they're not here anymore like him and his brother just like left the school so no investigation or anything? No, nothing. Nothing happened? Nothing happened. Fucking, how many people, other people probably got assaulted by that turd fucking between now and then. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, what's the old saying? Zebra don't change its stripes or whatever. Sure don't. Yeah. yeah. I feel like if you're the type of person to uh, try that at all, like you're going to break into someone's room or take advantage of some girl when she's fucked up, like... Outside of you guys f- flirting or hook, you know, like, hook, like just, like, out of nowhere, you decide to do something like that. Like, of course you're going to do it again. What would stop you? Right. Like, why? You don't have a conscience there about right or wrong. There's no way. So, I would assume that he's probably done stuff like that after, but I wouldn't know. Okay. So, then that was right right in the gate of semester one. Yep. yep. And how, many, how long did you stay at the school for? Just one semester. I okay. left. Okay. I left. That's why, that's why right. I left. Okay. Yeah. That's so why I left. All right. That's why I left. I went to a state college after that, which wasn't really that much better because I had issues with other guys too, that same, same, same shit. Same. So, I mean, like, not exactly the same, but that was the worst one. The other ones were, well, whatever. Let's see. Where was I at? So, <laughs> no, so, so you were... You left. You left Rangeley. What's oh yeah, I said I was getting that. What's that's why. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, you were. Yeah. Um. So that's why w- I started hanging out with this guy. Um. Because he was like a. He was in really good shape. He was like a bodybuilder, essentially. He was firefighter or whatever. Mm-hmm. So he's the only person I knew that like worked out, like lifted weights. And I was like, hey, I really want to lose weight and get in shape. Um. Mm-hmm. Can you help me? And so like that's how it started. Like we spent time together because I would go to the gym and he would train me. And then, like, slowly over, like, months of that and him being really nice and, like, saying all the right things, um, we started dating. 
And then the first three years we were together, though, um, I think that's why, like, it was almost like five, six year relationship. But the first three years is why it went so long. He contracted overseas firefighting. So um, the first three years we saw each other maybe every three to six months for like a week or two at a time. Oh, wow. So, okay. and I lived at home and was uh, like doing the tattoo thing and like lived alone and was like working and doing my own things. And this was in Florida? This was Colorado. Oh, in Colorado. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, the first three years, it was like honeymoon phase and we never saw each other, like, at all. Yeah. So, I didn't notice a lot of the things <laughs> that were going on. And um, then he got hurt over there. Um, he, like, tore his tricep and, like, sent him home because he couldn't work. And then I was paying all our bills, and he was playing video games, and then I just started noticing, like, weird shit. Like, I had become a little more independent at this point because I had lived alone, so that's where he fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, like, I didn't have any friends. Everything was in his name. Like, he little things. It's like, um, I made a lot of cash, so, like, all the bills were in his name, and I would just pay cash for stuff. When he got home, I was, like, paying ever, everything. And then um, I started, like, noticing things with, like, girls, like, weird girl stuff, like, emails and photos. And, like, that was kind of, like, the main thing. And then, like, him lying about being, like, trying to get workman's comp when he would be in the gym lifting 200-pound dumbbells. But said he couldn't open a door so he couldn't work. And I'm like, mm. what the fuck is happening? Like, what are you doing? And then I started noticing he would, like, steal. Like, we would go shopping and he would steal shit all the what time. What the fuck? Yeah. So, like, weird stuff kept piling up, but yeah. then, like, it was, like, um, this girl, she's really young, she was 19, so this is, like, I'm in my mid-20s now, mm -hmm. early 20s, and this 19-year-old girl who works at our gym, they had a weird relationship, and, like, she was weird around me, and that was, like, the straw that kind of broke the camel's back, it's, like, I found out that he was fucking her, and then, like, then I found out that he had been, like, cheating on me for the full six years with like lots of girls and lots of young girls mm -hmm. I, and he had been telling my friends and my boss and my brother-in-law that I was into girls and that it was okay for him to like bring them around and that's why no one told me that I was getting cheated on for that long mm. which was great super smart clever way to get away with cheating I guess because everyone's like Marissa's into weird swinger shit don't say nothing but really that was not the case mm. <laughs> you oh. just didn't know I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Everybody else knew. You didn't know. Everyone else knew. They just thought I was into it. And then when I when they started figuring out I wasn't into it, that's when, like, all these people and things started coming out of the woodwork. So I was like, I'm out. Oh, it got worse after that. But, like, I so I went and did that show. And I was like, that's when I had, like, decided to leave. But I was like, uh, when I go back, I have, like, I don't have anywhere to live. I don't know what I'm going to do. And so I was like, I was going to move. And I just, like, so when I decided to, I met someone on that stupid fucking show, and I hate this part of it, but I think it happened by design. I think it was, like, my out. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it was, gave me a reason to leave Colorado, because I think if I had went back, things had, I mean, it would have been horrible. I would not be where I am today, for sure. But it was, like, my reason to be, like, you have a, an option to leave now. You so you manifested an exit is what you're saying. Yes, absolutely. I for sure. Um but when that when I decided to leave and he found out um that's when like and he kind of lost control of me cuz up until that point I think he thought I was going to come back, like stay, like he could manipulate his way into being like I never did anything. I didn't cheat on you like mm -hmm. cuz he had convinced all, like it, after like everything came out, like he literally had to leave the town we lived in because so much shit came out about the what he was doing, like not just with me, but like his business. Like I gave him money to start a business with a friend and he had been like stealing all the money and like buying things. It wasn't going into the business. Like oh, wow. yeah, and like he got arrested for like stealing from Walmart. He got like thrown out of the gym for like throwing a dumbbell at someone. Um he so he like threatened to murder me. Is what ended up happening mm. when I was actually leaving. So, like, his best friend that I wasn't even close with it called me one day when I was, and he wasn't even in the country still. Like, I went back and I specifically went back when he wasn't in the country because I was nervous. And she called me and she was like, Hey, I know we weren't really close, but I called the police department and left a non emergency complaint because he's technically not in the country. But if he comes back, I think he's going to fucking hurt you. So I called them and let them know. And mm. I was like, shit, that's a lot. Because, like, I know what he's saying to me, but if he's saying this to, like, other people and their concern. Terrible sign. Terrible sign. Yeah. So I 
pack up like the very little shit that I have and my car that I paid off and I drive to Florida and I'm like halfway there and I'm getting like death threats and like I'll make sure you eat through a tube for the rest of your fucking life or break your hands or fucking kill you. Oh, so um, these are the things that he's texting. Yes. And then I get a text and it's like, hey, remember when you paid your car off and I put the title in your name? I didn't. So either you buy it from me again or I report it as stolen. So I'm like, that's sick. <laughs> so I had to pay for, I ended up paying for it again because I'm like already in Florida with this truck that I had put like a bunch of money and time into. And I'm like, I either pay for something I already have or I pay more money for something new. So I'm like sick. Like everything, I, I literally, he put all my guns in consignment so I couldn't get them. Um, like had like comic books and guns and like stuff that he like put away in his name so I couldn't access them. He sold a car of mine. Like it was like a 66 Chevelle. He sold it and kept the money um, while it was like on the show and stuff because he knew I was out of town and couldn't do anything about it. Um, like the 10 grand I gave him to start a business I never saw again. Like he got so much money and shit out of me, but I was like, I just wanted out. I was like, I just want away from this fucking nightmare situation. Like at one point I remember like w before I left, like he tried to like almost broke my arm, like slamming it in a door and would like throw me around and do fucking crazy shit all the time. Like punched a hole in like a fucking car. Like, just crazy shit. Um, so what kept you from, like, reporting him to the to the police when he's doing all this shit? Um, it's a small town. Like, oh, he manipulated town. a whole town into thinking he's a really good person and, like, so you think he's a firefighter and, like... Oh, okay. So you think it would have fallen on deaf ears if you went to... I don't think anyone would have fucking cared. Mm. Um, and at that point, I just was, like, I just want out of this situation. Like, I don't want to be here any longer. I just want to get away from it. Like, that's what I wanted. So, and that's what I did. I just left, like, as soon as I, like, in a very small time frame. It was, like, a couple weeks of being back, and I just packed all my shit and left. Um, and then I, when I got to Florida and all this shit happened, I, um, and he was threatening me, I did go and file a restraining order. Mm -hmm. And they served him. And because we were in two different states, they gave me, like, a temporary restraining order. But they're like, mm -hmm. we can't give you the full one until he crosses state lines. But as soon as he does that, like, you show up and we'll, like, give it to you right away. Um, but because I served in a restraining order, if you have, like, any domestic shit, like, they take away your guns. He wouldn't be able to work for the government. Yep. So, like, it stopped. Like, it pretty much made him stop all the threats and stuff. But he did take me to court over, like, a $100 cell phone bill because we were on the same, like, plan for a while to make me fly back to Colorado and sit in, f in the same room as him. Like, it was just a control. It was, like, his last-ditch effort just to, like, have control over me. And I remember being in that courtroom and like I had letters from people about like all the threats, like from his friends, other people. I had all the text messages written out, like my restraining order for the judge. And I'm like, you know, like this is ridiculous. I shouldn't be here. We're on the same cell phone plan. Like he gave it to me to use like an upgrade. It's like, that's what it was. What he took me to court for. <laughs> I am like, and so I'm like, and he's fucking crazy. Like I have all of this right, stuff. Yeah. And like, I remember the judge read some of the like text messages out loud and he, cause he's like a legit sociopath. Like I think to this day that he thinks he has done nothing wrong. Like he's the good guy. Like he made me who I am and I was unfucking grateful and he never cheated. Cause he like sat there and she read it out loud and he's like, I never did that ma'am. And she's like, you never, this isn't your fucking phone number. This isn't. And he's like, I never said any of those things. And she's like. What? <laughs> like, right. everyone's just, like, baffled. Like, but he, I think he believes it. Like, he's a legit sociopath, just, like, detached and doesn't feel, like, remorse or empathy. Like, it's crazy. So. So what would, because so, I have, I have a pretty good, sizable female following. Uh-huh. I know it's shocking, but like, <laughs> I have a, I have a, I have a pretty good sized fe female audience and lots of female fans. What advice would you give to somebody if they're in, if they are finding themselves in this situation or like the beginning of this situation? What, what would you do different or what advice would you give to somebody to get them, to help them and get them out of uh, this situation? My biggest advice would be like, you need a support system. So like I was easy pickings. Like mm -hmm. I left home at 17. I didn't talk to my family cause like they're abusive too. Um, he slowly made sure to, like, cut away my friends, like, and so the only people I really had were, like, either his circle or him, so, like, that's what they do, like, any type of abusive relationship, like, they pretty much try to, like, cut you off from any support, so, like, you need a good support group, whether it's, like, a really close friend you trust or your family or whatever, like, don't alienate those people, um, because they're the ones who are going to help you if you need out, right, like, it's really, it's, 
I know a lot of people who've been in like abusive relationships and like a lot of women like that's the like it's not just easy to like leave like people are like why don't you fucking leave and I'm like they literally will try to destroy you and like not just like your confidence but like your life like if you don't have anything in your name like you don't have like credit or money or or whatever like it's really hard to leave that yeah, and then not- also you don't feel like you are able because like they literally just tell you you're a piece of shit all the fucking time and then you don't have any friends or support like where do you go what do you do like starting over from scratch is hard for anyone it's especially hard for someone who has nothing and no one so i'm like definitely have a support group that's really important um recognizing the signs like doing a lot of like research since then about like gaslighting and like tactics for like manipulation and like abuse um like cycles like it Mm -hmm. does help you recognize those patterns so that you don't fall into them again because like my relationship right after him was also pretty abusive but it was mostly just mental and like that was but I just like like I think about it now and I'm like there's a reason I kept falling into those patterns like it's not um, my fault technically but because of like my past and like all the trauma like you really have like a fucked up version of what you think love and attention is correct and so you'll fall into patterns of like what you because it's normal to you like this feels Mm -hmm. normal um because it's what i'm used to and even if you think it's different it's not and so um trying to recognize those things and like why you fall into those patterns and then like changing them that helps too education is like a great tool and then like being independent i think that helps like being um self sufficient also like if you're independent and you don't need another person to survive then you're way less likely to fall into Correct. like that codependency like manipulative relationship yeah i i mean i've had my fair share of it too oh, I, I'll, unfortunately like so i know a lot most people have like i think it's yeah. way more common than people think it is yep. um which is so unfortunate yeah like, that's the case yeah and and so uh, my things are it, where there's smoke there's fire Keep that in mind. Yeah. And also, m- the other thing that I'm super guilty of is when it's raining red flags, <laughs> I like to collect them up <laughs> and cut them into Valentine's Day cards <laughs> and give them back as gifts. That's and say, hilarious. Yeah, hey, I love you so much. Thank you for... Oh my gosh, that is so funny. I'm like hard, no red flags anymore. Almost to a fault where I'm like, is that kind of red and they're like it's not even red it's like yellow like maybe like off-white and i'm like it kind of looks red (laughs) you're out (laughs) we're done here (laughs) i'll get you an uber (laughs) yeah here we go yeah it's here see you later see you later bye yeah so yeah wow okay so that's a wild ride so that took you down to florida yes and then you worked in a shop in florida i did and where where specifically in florida fort lauderdale okay and how did you like it down there fucking terrible again (laughs) Why? Why I moved, well, so like moved there yeah. with a guy mm-hmm. who um, also like technically we're on good terms. Like mm-hmm. I know like he's not a vindictive person, but like as a boyfriend, he's just so fucked up that he just treats women like shit. Mm. Um, and he's a little bit of a, a narcissist. He's just got a lot of trauma, too. He just doesn't fucking deal with it. But like so I moved there with him and again, very manipulative at first, said all the right things. Was I was like, he's like a total, I'm like, not my type, but like totally different than the guy I was just with. He's like very right. sweet and thoughtful and kind and like says all the right things. And I'm like, he seems to really care about me. And like, I'm in a crazy situation running away from a psychopath who fucking like is a huge dude. Right. And he's okay with it. So I'm like, all right. So we get to Florida and within like a couple months, things drastically changed. And it was like so much like all the things that he said he liked about me mm-hmm. were now fucking problems. Like, um, cause I was bodybuilding at the time too. So I was like, working out was really important to me, obviously. And I was like, and he didn't work out and I didn't care. I was like, if it's not important to you, he's like, oh no, I will. And we got there. He's like, I don't want to date a man. I want to date a woman. Like you're too muscular. It's fucking gross. Like that was great. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. And then it was like, you care too much about what other people think and like your social media, like you just need validation from others. And I'm like, that's not fucking, that's not true. Like, I don't give a fuck. And I was like, but it was all just like. It was a lot of gaslighting, a lot of projecting, like a lot of the shit he did. I was like, oh, this is definitely a you thing. But like, like kind of knew, but kind of didn't. But it was so much like so fucking toxic and just, yeah, a lot of cheating and like just mental abuse. So I fucking and like when I moved there, I didn't have any friends, didn't know anyone. He was the only person I knew and we worked together. So everyone I met was like his people. Oh. So um, that was fucking rough. 
And, like, I'm friends with all of them still. So, like, they like me more than they like him. They chose, like, Team Marissa. Um, but it was hard, like, living in Florida. I went from Colorado and, like, mountains to, like, Florida. And it's hot and humid and flat. And being around, like, no one I know. And then it's just, like, fucked up toxic relationships. So I was there for, like, and that whole stuff, dude. I, like, fucking saved that motherfucker's life. Like, and like, he almost died. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is what? such a crazy st- dude my life is so crazy i know this is great this is such great stuff dude, okay so <laughs> so my florida people are animal people like mm-hmm. if you've seen tiger king i know s- most of those motherfuckers personally if okay. they're from florida not okay. the fucking crazy oklahoma people but okay. um the florida people yeah like have you seen that show i have yeah. i haven't seen it okay so mm-hmm. like tom crutchfield is like the herpetologist the mm-hmm. snake dude yeah i know him personally okay so, um, my ex was really into like snakes. We had like a lot of venomous snakes, um, in our house. Yeah. No hard pass. Yeah. So like I Super handled like cobras and fucking what rattlesnakes. What the fuck are you saying right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like lived in my house and we just like handle them. You like, had fucking cobras in your house. Oh yeah. Like I literally oh. held them. I have like, I, I don't know. I have some photos of me holding them. A um, cobra. Yeah. That if it bites you, you die. Yeah. And which you're is, holding which it. Which is where the story Oh, goes. my fuck. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my fuck. Okay. Let's hear this. Oh, so this is towards the end of our relationship. Like, we had already broken up once, kind of got back together, and I was, like, already on my way out. Like, I was thinking mm-hmm. about moving to Vegas, and I was, like, over it because I'm, like, this motherfucker's never changing. So we go down to, like, Tom Crutchfield has, like, a farm um, in Homestead, Florida, so, like, near Miami, yeah. and that's where all his snakes are, and there's this snake, 14-foot king cobra called Naga, um, and we've messed with her before. They've handled her. Um, we get there that day, and um, I don't know if you know a lot about venomous snakes or cobras, but cobras are, like... Oh, fuck them. Oh, I stay... No. Yeah, no. I like snakes, but I'll, I don't do venomous no more. It's just not worth it. After seeing so many friends get, like, bit and shit and, and this shit. So, we get there, and she's shedding. Like, when cobras shed, they're all eyesight. So, like, some, like, rattlesnakes and stuff, like, some of it's heat, some of it's sound. But, like, cobras are just sight. That's, like, when you see all the videos of, like, people moving their hands and shit. Like, yeah. it's just they're watching either your eyes or your head or your hand. So, they just follow movement. Um, so, she's shedding. So, she has shed over her eyes, which means she can't see, and she's being pissy. And, like, we're inside getting her out of the cage. And I'm like, I don't think we should mess with her today. Like, I literally said it. I was like, it just doesn't, she doesn't seem happy. Maybe we shouldn't. And they're like, no, when we get her out into the field, she'll calm down. And I'm like, oh, fucking no. It doesn't see, it doesn't feel right. So do that. Get her out. And he's handling her and, um, like, grabbing her tail. And he's trying to get her to, like, hood up. And he gets her up once. And she's being pissy. And she turns around and tags him in the hand. <gasps> And so, and I'm videoing it, and (laughs) drops the snake, and Tom panics. Um, And I'm like, I'm the least experienced person there with venomous snakes, and Tom's the most experienced, and he panics. Um, And, like, we all think, like, he's dead, right? Dead. (laughs) The last person to get bit by a king cobra died within, like, ten minutes. So they panic and they're like, we'll call the ambulance and wait. And I'm like, fuck no, that's a terrible idea. He'll literally die before they get here. So I'm like, I go into like fucking order mode and I'm like, you're going to, we're going to drive. Like you're going to get in the car. You're fine. Totally fine. You're calm. You're good. Yeah. You're so yeah, good. Literally. You're so good. I was just like, yeah, yeah, literally. I was like, cause if his heart rate goes up, that venom gets pumped into his fucking body faster. So I'm like, just, you know, you're fine. You're going to be okay. Did you and guys try and tourniquet his arm or anything? No. Like see, that? that's the worst thing you could ever do. You never want to tourniquet a snake bite. I just talked to this about someone else too. I don't know why this is still a myth. Um, that's the worst thing you can do. Cause if you tourniquet the snake bite, all that venom and is going to fill up. And then you're going to release the tourniquet and it's going to release at a faster rate and just kill you like instantly. Okay. So you should just honestly stay calm, breathe, try to regulate your heart So there's really nothing you can fucking do. No. So there's not the old. No, can't suck it out. Yeah. Can't tourniquet it. Like breathe slow. Keep your heart rate low because the less it gets pumped through your body slower, the better. So I'm like, we literally perfect storm of events, though. He's the luckiest motherfucker on the planet. Um, Miami is one of the only places in the country that keeps um, non-native, like, anti-venom. So, for, like, exotics. So, king cobra venom. So, we, and we're, fr- and I know all the p- 
people who are do the Venom 1 unit for the fire department. So I'm like, you're going to call Venom 1. You're going to call the fucking hospital. I'm going to drive. You're going to get in the car. I'm like, Ryan's going to pick the fucking snake up and put it back, and we're going to go. So we get in the car, and I'm, like, hauling ass towards the hospital. And there's, like, a cop on the side of the road once we get, like, closer to where, like, a town is. And I flag her down. And I'm like, you need to escort us to the hospital right fucking now. Like, yelling at her. And she's like, okay. Takes us. As soon as we get to the hospital, he, like... And I'm, like, on the way there, I'm like, he's going to die. Like, he's going to die. He's going to die in my fucking passenger seat. Like, but, like, don't say that. Like, you're totally good. You're good. We're fine. You're so good. But, like, for sure, everyone's thinking it. And I'm like, if I could drive a little slower, would die. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I could totally get away oh. with this. Like, I could be, like, almost like a widow. <laughs> you were, like, going to manifest your second exit is what you were going to do. <laughs> but I was like, I couldn't do that. So I, like, haul an ass, get him to the hospital. He, like, he walks in and then, like, immediately collapses. So they, like, intubate him. They had airlifted antivenom. Um, they start pumping him full of antivenom. And um, I don't know, gave him, like, I think 20, 30 vials to start or something. Like, a lot of mm-hmm. antivenom. I'm like, no one in the hospital knows what to do. Like, they've never had a fucking King Cobra bite. So he lives, <laughs> surprisingly. Um, and literally, I, I, like, perfect storm of events, but, like, I, I could have, I saved that motherfucker's life. If anyone else would have fucking handled it, he wouldn't have, they wouldn't have taken him to the hospital. He wouldn't have got there. Like, he would have just died. So, or, like, a minute later, if we had literally been, like, a minute late, he would have died because they wouldn't have been able to, because it shuts down all your organs. Mm. It's a neurotoxin. So, there's, like, hemotoxin, neurotoxins. Um, Some snakes have both. Um, So, it's just neuro, which he's actually pretty lucky. Um, So, before it, like, got to all his organs, they actually saved him. But, yeah, it was fucking crazy. So, that happened. That was a fun experience. And, okay. Wow. Wow. That I was know. a lot. A lot. That's a lot. I know. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm on the ride. So Insane. it's great. I bought the ticket. I'm on the ride. Okay. So then he gets, he, okay. So then that happened. So then uh, did you, how long did the relationship last after he, like, he almost uh, died? I mean, so I, because I was the one, like, in the hospital dealing with everything, like, they moved him to another hospital and he, like, started, they extubated him and then he immediately started showing, like, an, like signs of the venom again. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, again, I was like, I could just, not Let him die. Not say anything. <laughs> but like I was like, nurse, you need to get him anti venom. If you don't, he's gonna die. And she was like, No, the doctor needs to come and I'm like, I don't care. I like I know I look like a some dumb tattooed girl, but like if you don't give it to him now, he'll literally die. And I and in my head I'm like, if we just let her Oh, it's not your fault. You're not the doctor. You're not the nurse. But they did. They listened to me. And they fucking, like, he was fine. And then um, I had to also mention, because, like, he got bit in the finger and he got lucky. It was one fang, they think. And, like, she didn't pump all the venom. Um, if he had both, he would probably wouldn't have made it at all. Um, but his finger was, like, necrotic and not healing. And I was like, you should probably check for a fang, because that's what snakes do. Like, retics and all those things. Like, fangs break off in bone, cause a nasty infection, because snakes are gross. They eat, like, mm-hmm. mice and shit and stuff. And they're like, no, there's nothing in there. And so, like, months later of us going to, like, hospital appointments, because I took him. I was like, I'll fucking take you. I'm the one who was there. I know all the stuff. Like, no one else knows. Take him all those appointments. And then finally they, like. So you're, like, girlfriend of the year, but this basically. Is, yeah. Basically. Um, the first, we got in a car accident, like, within three months of us dating. That His fault, because um, he was being drunk and crazy and drove us into a fucking, like, cement barrier on the highway. And broke his jaw in like three places and like I was the first time I found out that he was cheating on me and my first thought was like I'm gonna make sure he's okay before I leave <laughs> I'm like a nice stupid dumb person no you're a good person <sighs> you're a good person kind of dumb no uh, no 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 um, well obviously I learned from all my mistakes so like this shit will never happen again but um yeah I should fucking get I mean his parents still like me like Whatever. I should get girlfriend <laughs> of the year. I was like yeah. fucking super nice. <laughs> Matt and I are gonna make you a, a, a we're gonna make you a trophy. You're gonna get a trophy. So this gonna, is why I've been be here. single so, for right six years because yeah. after that relationship, I'm like, we are not gonna continue these fucking problems. We are gonna do self work and educate ourselves and do all the inner shit and make sure that this never happens again. Like two back to back 
horrible abusive relationships. Yeah, no. I gotcha. Not not fucking with that shit again. So I'm like, next one you have is going to be so healthy and normal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you're going to stay single until it happens. No, normal doesn't exist, but it's... I mean, it's not a, not crazy abusive and toxic. Co- correct. Like, yeah. more normal than that. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah, I'm not going to date a fucking predator again. No. No, thank I'm, I mean, I'm too old at this point. They don't yeah, even yeah. want me. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't... Yeah, I mean, there's, there's unique individuals out there that yeah. are... Yeah, there's some... It's gross, yeah. Gross. It's a dangerous it's a dangerous world out there. So Yeah. yeah. The world's yeah. a fucked up place. It super is. Yeah. So okay, so you shitbag number two you saved from like almost dying from a cobra bite. Yep. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. And so then what was your exit from Florida? What where was your next spot? The Las Vegas. So okay. at, at that point I don't remember exactly yeah, it happened to like November ish. Like both accidents were around mm-hmm. November, I remember. Um, so like November ish this happened, so it's like a couple months of this happening and it I remember I had already talked about before it happened. I think I was like, I'm Mm -hmm. moving. Like I got off or yeah, something like I'm trying to remember like the timeline. I just remember I had wanted to move already and I had met some friends, like another tattoo artist at a convention and like we hit it off and he's like, I really like, think you like my fiance. Like you should come out to Vegas and work. And I was like, actually Vegas is one of those places I've considered moving to. I don't know why. I just like always thought about it. And he was like, you should come out to the shop and like, we'll give you a job. And then like right after that, another shop in Vegas that was really good was like, hey, if you want a job, let us know. And I was like, well, that seems like a sign. So um, I was yeah, because like, it seems like your your tattooing career is like progressing nicely. Like your yes. portfolio is fucking amazing. Thank so, you. So, yeah. yeah, I would like to think that I have gotten better over the years. Ho- thankfully, that was always my goal. I mean, when you can close your books because you have too many people beating <laughs> down your fucking door, that's a that's a definite yeah. sign. So, uh, so your your tattoo career is kicking ass. Yeah. I was How did you stay focused on on advancing your career and getting better at your craft when all of this was going on? Oh, uh, I'm I'm good at de like or like compartmentalizing. Like I've never been a fan of like taking your personal shit to work. Like and like work was kind of all I had at that point. Like I didn't take vacations. I didn't do nothing. All I did was work. Um, that was it. So I was just like, well, if I'm, I wanted to be good, you gotta get better. And is that by volume or like, what, what was your, what, what are your mechanisms for getting better as a, as a, as a, as a tattooist? Um, I just it's like art and I think like looking at other people's art and like trying to like learn new skill or like learn new ways to do things, but also like drawing better. Mm-hmm. I think drawing better just across the board is going to make your tattoos better. So like, that was always my goal is like, I have to draw better. So, so did you always like as so as as a tattoo artist you're always sketching drawing yeah okay and then so then are you doing that in um the you know the analog media like are you doing I that on paper to, pencil I did or? so when I lived in Florida I still drew everything on paper okay um Florida was like right before I left to move to Vegas I got an iPad for the first time because mm-hmm. like that's what everyone was doing and I was very anti because I am an analog person I am not tech savvy. Um, even with my iPad, people are like, how do you use it? And I'm like, literally just like if it was paper, mm-hmm. <laughs> I do the least. <laughs> I yeah. just draw, like I use like two, a pen and a pencil. That's it. But, um, yeah, I was like analog for a really long time. And then I got an iPad and I was like, it was the convenience that kind of got me more than anything. Cause I'm like, Oh, if I try to draw on a plane or if I go somewhere, I don't have to bring a thousand sheets of paper, transfer mm-hmm. paper, different pens, pencils, erasers, sharpeners. Like I can just bring this one thing. This makes my life so much easier. So I switched over. Um, I mean, it's essentially the same. It's just a lot more convenient. Yeah. And easier to save stuff too. So yeah, I have everything saved in one place now yeah. instead of just like, and I'm like not a sentimental person. So I have thrown away pretty much every drawing or artwork I've ever done. And then, so how did you how did you go from, or wh- at what point did you start painting? Um, I mean, I, uh, I I mean I started painting when I was like eight. Okay. And I took cla- like a uh, little old lady in my town. Um, at once a week, I would go and do uh, acrylic painting, like landscapes with her. Yeah. Until I left for college, um, and then I didn't paint again until twenty twenty. Oh, wow. Because mm-hmm. I didn't have time. Like, all I did was draw and tattoo. And, like, tattooing... So you seriously didn't start painting until, like, 20? 2020. Because your fucking paintings are fire. <laughs> like, they're... I. Like, I've maybe painted, like, a couple times within those, I don't know, 12 years or whatever. Um, but not a lot. Like, 
barely any. So yeah, so my like the great white shark is awesome. Oh, the buffalo is awesome, and then like I really loved that you. We should probably mention that you're you're Native American. I am. And what? L- I'm L- Lakota Sioux. Okay. Yeah. Of course you are. <laughs> so. Of course you are. And so then, like, what what chief is that? Because you had this picture of uh, you painted. He's George actually Crow. Okay. He's so you, Crow, yeah. You painted George Washington. I did. And then did you just, f- was it, was this your intention to no. do this? Or you just got fucking pissed and you like. Oh. Yeah, I had started that George Washington. I like George Washington. Yeah. I think he's a, he's a great president. He's, if you look into him, like mm-hmm. he's super interesting and like was way There's more. There's some really great books on him. Yeah. yeah. And he was like way ahead of his time when it came to like, like slavery and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like he actually didn't believe in slaves and stuff. I'm like yeah. the time period. Like it's really like everyone is doing something and you're the only one. Like it's weird. But like he's way ahead of his time and he's super smart. I loved like. Most of how he won the war was espionage. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's just so fascinating. Um, yeah, his spy network was his, yeah. hu- his human Like, game. he wasn't, like, a really good, like, general. Like, mm-hmm. he was kind of sucked at it, but he was, like, really good at, like, tactics and then espionage. And, like, that's kind of how they ended up winning. And then yeah. he got, like, asked to be president. And then when they asked him back, he was like, no, nah, I don't fucking want to do that. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, you shouldn't do a two-party system. And they're like, go fuck yourself. And he's mm-hmm. like, okay. And then... <laughs> Yeah, there's some uh, there's some really great books. Yeah, yeah. he's he was interesting. So, yeah, so um, you got so what caused you to get pissed then when you like? Oh, I just I started it and it was looking like garbage. So it was I like, mean it wasn't, but okay. Ugh, I the, hated it. You're the artist. Yeah, okay. exactly. Like yeah. I just was like, this looks yeah. terrible, and I don't think I'm gonna be able to fix it to the way I want it. So I'm like, I'm just gonna fucking cover it. And you covered it with a awesome Native, <laughs> Native and, American. Yeah, it was yeah. fucking rad. The message was not lost on me. Good, because I, I also once I decided to do that, I was like, there's a lot of like poetry here. Like, S- yeah, super. Yes. Do you sell that piece or did you sell yeah. it? Yeah. Um, so I um I actually am on the board of a nonprofit mm-hmm. um that helps. It's it's called War, War Party Ranch. And War we're, Party Movement. Yes. I'm familiar with it. Oh, yeah. So um, we started a nonprofit associated with War Party Movement called War Party Ranch, and it's to help um, with women of abuse yeah. and to teach them a skill set um, so they can get into, like, agriculture mm-hmm. or outfitting communities. So um, I – and it's, like, we want – and it's still doing a lot with, like, Native people and Native solutions. So I wanted to start that painting and then auction it off for our nonprofit so it's not finished yet. And you're on the board of that? Yes. Wild. Because, like, I, um, do you know um, Nikki? Yes. Fly girl. Yeah. Yeah. She's a friend of mine. Yeah. Yeah, she, she's, she, she's got. She's I haven't met her in person, but, yeah. like, uh, so Jeremiah, who's, like, mm-hmm. founder, he's, yeah. like, the linchpin. Um, he's an incredible humor, human, and um, he talks about Nikki. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then the last guest that I just had on last week was Cell from Desert Patriot. She oh, okay. she She rocks those hoodies awesome. and sweatshirts all the time Hell too. Yeah. There's a lot of people I know in the industry that are flying that flag. Good. Which it's a fucking awesome cause. So Fuck yeah, it's yeah. a great, co- yeah, yeah, it's a great cause. So how, so you rock, so you're going to, you're going to auction that painting off. Yes. That painting is fucking awesome. Thanks. It's not even finished. So I, like I have it. to finish it first. Okay. Well, it's, you're off to a great start. on that Thank thing. you. Yeah. I almost ruined it. Like yeah. at one point I did something and I went, Oh my gosh, we're going to have to fucking burn it. Cause, <laughs> yeah, cause there's really, there's, there's no nothing. going, yeah, no, there's no going back here, but it's, it's okay. I just gotta, I need to finish it. That's really wild that you just like picked up painting again, like two years ago. Cause you would think like the quality of your work, I was like, oh, she's been painting since she's a kid. Yeah. Like consistently. Yep. No, I just, uh. So th- how long was that break? 2008 to 2020. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I mean, like, I did, like, one oil, like, at a, I did, like, a little class once for, like, this little tiny oil painting mm-hmm. um, in between, and I painted, like, maybe a couple other paintings in that time, but, like, mm-hmm. literally nothing. Like, I think there's probably been, oh, gosh, eight years of just, I hadn't touched a paintbrush. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, then I was, like, 2020 happened. I was actually supposed to move to Missouri March of 2020. I had signed my lease. I, and then the world shut down. Yeah. So I stopped taking appointments in Vegas because I was like, I'm moving. Um, I couldn't move, couldn't take appointments in Vegas because like we weren't supposed to work and mm-hmm. I couldn't tell people like if I was going to do it illegally, mm-hmm. I couldn't tell people I was willing to do that. So I was like, I don't have anything to do. Did you continue to tattoo through COVID? No, I couldn't. Um, cause I couldn't tell people mm-hmm. like, um, like if I had not been moving and I had all my appointments still, I could have like reached out to the people I trusted 
like a clients and been like, hey, if you're comfortable, we could still do this like under the table essentially. Mm -hmm. But I, I stopped booking appointments. So I didn't have any appointments in Nevada and I didn't know how to like let people know without it being like, because a lot of my clients, most of them traveled in from somewhere else. Like I had almost zero local clients. Oh, okay. It was all people flying in. So I was like, it's kind of weird, hard to do that. Like when no one's able to travel, like how are mm -hmm. you going to get here anyways? Yeah. So didn't tattoo at all um, till, um, yeah. And so I was like, I'll start painting again. Like I've been wanting to paint again. Like here's the time. So I just started painting. I, you're, yeah, the work is awesome. So then at what point, okay, so you've, from what I've surmised from listening to you and like r reading what you've, you've posted, at what point did you get into firearms or what point did you start taking response? Because you said something that was very poignant and it's something that I tell people all the time. You're fucking responsible for your own, your, your own safety. Yes. People don't know that, you know, um, Matt and Bonnie and I just had a conversation about it at the restaurant the other night where we were talking about like the current state of affairs with like the anti two A shit that's going on in the yeah. country. And, um, you know, it's like I constantly tell people, hey, newsflash people, the, the there's already a law against murder. Yeah. <laughs> so nobody's really paying the fuck attention to that. I so what it. makes you think that, like, people that want to kill people are going to pay attention to your magazine capacity I just, law? I never understood that, like, fallacy that people have where it's, like, people who are already sh murdering people, like, yeah. that's illegal. The and worst like, law you can break. And a lot, yeah, the worst one. And a lot mm -hmm. of those, those, like, mass shootings, it's n either their firearms were acquired illegally or someone else's or whatever. So I'm like, mm -hmm. they're not, it's not even, like, that's a mute point. It has mm -hmm. nothing, like, you're just taking, like, legal people who have, like, firearms, you're just taking away, like, their right to defend themselves, essentially. Yeah. And I'm like, and it has less, I mean, like, a small part of it is, like, self-defense, but a large part of it, it's written in the Constitution, is government. Yeah. <laughs> like, over control of the government and being able to defend ourselves from them. So I'm like... Which we got a really good... We got front row seats and a good taste of during COVID. Yes. The whole world got to see how tyrannical... Three months and two years later. Yeah. So, yeah. And I still think, like, there's a lot of people who don't feel like it's overreach. They're just like, no, this is the way it's supposed to be because of our safety. And I'm like fucking safety yeah no you're but like they aren't following the rules mm -mm. so but they're f making you i don't understand me either yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah if you go back and listen to some of my prior podcasts like i i got my page deleted largely because of my covid opinion yeah like got got deleted and other things my use of the word my favorite use of our favorite our favorite word our favorite word, word. Our favorite word. I've, I've used that a lot and um Instagram did not like yeah. the way I talk, and it did not like the things that I was saying. Yeah. So it decided. I've to been shadow me. banned pretty heavily, but I did call Instagram a bunch of pussies on a story. I did. I I tagged them. Yeah. And I'm like, go <laughs> yeah. fuck yourself. I yeah. told them to go fuck your mother. Oh yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. They don't. They don't love that. No. I get uh, flagged for hate speech and violence quite often. Yeah. I'm like super unfair. Mm -hmm. My final thing that I got deleted for was. And this is how it, it had to have been a human and not an algorithm that, that I think was targeting me. Either oh, at Instagram yeah. or I was just getting the shit reported out of me by somebody who disliked me. Yeah. Was, uh, somebody asked me in a story about um, or in a comment thread about one of my followers. Uh, she was asking me about she's a new firearms owner and she's asking me about dry firing. And I was like, yeah, the yes, do dry fire. It's super, super important. And so I said doing dry fire is critical to firearms training. Yeah. And they... They flagged me for sale of illegal or regulated goods. Oh, yeah. Well, because you're clearly selling something. Yeah. And yeah. so they, they, they flagged me and then deleted me for that. You're ridiculous. The other stuff that I had fractions for was like I had some pretty contra what could be considered controversial art. I'm a fan of the female form, as are many other artists and, yeah. you know, dudes. So there was this really awesome piece of artwork. I'm also into psychedelics where there was like this chick wearing a thong like laying in a garden of mushrooms that were shaped like penises yeah and i it was from an artist page and, and consequently that artist it's had like he had like 150,000 followers yeah and so i just like you know put shared it, it. shared it yeah. on my story maybe it was on my page might have been on my page there was a period of time where i just gave zero fucks i like went hard in the paint in instagram yeah. and i gave no fucks like i was completely uncensored and so and then, no, it was on a story because I took music and put it to it. So this is music that Instagram is like, here's our music. Oh, I get flagged for that shit all the time. Yeah. And so 
they said that they flagged me for what was it um solicitation of uh illegal sexual stuff or whatever like i got basically i was like i was trying to sex traffic people or something yeah. they flagged me for that and then deleted they deleted my page so i, I love that i've seen like actual real girls nipples but yeah. then i've seen people post artwork that has mm -hmm. nipples like it's clearly on a piece of paper or a canvas and yeah. you're flagging mm -hmm. this for nudity but the chick with her fucking vagina out showing your butthole and yeah. like swipe up for my only fans yeah. that's good to go we're okay with this we're completely cool. good with it Okay, Compl sick. Yes. Just wanted to. I do love like Instagram's mm -hmm. algorithm. Like anytime I get shadow banned, I'm like, if I post a picture in a bikini, that shadow ban goes away. And mm -hmm. I'm like, this is how our algorithm works. And I fucking hate it. Mm -hmm. But I literally make it a point to tell people, I'm like, getting out of my shadow ban, don't mind me. Yeah, don't mind me. I'm just going to wear this thong to get out of my shadow yeah, ban. Yeah, like, right I don't, I don't want to do this normally, but I need to get my shadow. <laughs> That's what I told all my guy friends too, because they like, anytime you post gun stuff, you're, you like get shadow banned super fast. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, butt photo. Bro, go get a thong and get post your butt. Like, you'll get out of it immediately. And they're like, do you think that's the same? I'm like, I think it'd be better. <laughs> better for you. Noted, because, like, right now I'm, like, I'm on the lowest tier of, like, shadow ban hell. Like, whatever their darkest, <laughs> deepest shadow ban hell you can be in, I'm in that. Because I've been, like, I cannot. Dante's Inferno levels. Yeah, just, yeah. correct. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot grow past 800 followers. Like, I am oh. stuck at this, like, 800 follower thing where... And I post, you know, like I I posted like six reels the other day and it was nothing controversial. You yeah. know, it was like fun stuff. It was like filters of my truck. You know, I was like did a little video of my truck with like that really cool neon blast mm -hmm. fucking filter and like some other shit. And like, nope, like nope. I'm I'm on the lowest. Like I can't I can't get out of it. So and it was funny, like when I had 9000 followers, I used to do a, I'd, I'd do a live and at least two to five hundred people would show up. Pretty decent. Yeah. And yeah, so, that's a good percentage. yeah. And so then now I can't even do lives anymore because like three people will show up. I literally can't do lives. Oh, I, you can't. They just completely cut your lives off. No, they don't, won't even let me do it. Okay. You're like, not even allowed. No, I, okay. I'm like, I went hunting with Jeremiah. We mm -hmm. went, I went my first archery elk season. Um, Did you get some? Mostly just camping trip. <sighs> we saw like one elk social distancing from all the <laughs> <elk>. <laughs> But uh, we went to do like, because it was, like, my first archery yeah. elk hunt. And mm -hmm. so, my first elk hunt ever, actually. So, we, like, tried to do a live together to talk about it. And um, I was, like, I'm going to go live. We're both go live on each of our platforms. Mm -hmm. So, like, but so people can get the same thing. And, like, Instagram was just, like, go fuck yourself. And I was, like, I didn't even know this was, like, I don't even want to do lives. This is what you took away from me? Like, mm -hmm. what a weird choice. So. Yeah. It's, uh, and I haven't tried since because I just, I never do them. Like, mm -hmm. I think they're awkward and weird. And. Yeah. It can be, yeah. Yeah, and it's mostly just, like, one dude saying something stupid the whole time. Mm -hmm. I try to ignore, and then I want to be like, go fucking suck a dick, and then I get flagged for fucking hate speech, and yeah. it starts all over. It just starts all over. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a slippery slope. Yeah. Uh, so, that, yeah, so, well, you're that's why you're shadow banned, because you're, like, you're, you're out there hunting, and then you're... So, th uh, the original question before we went down this oh, yeah, the fun little on. track was, <laughs> how did you get into shooting? Um... I mean, I grew up on a farm, so, like, and in the country, so, like, f guns were always, like, a lifestyle thing. Yes, they were. Um, but... I had a twenty two in my room, loaded. Yeah. Up against the corner of my room in the in my bedroom since I was, like, seven or eight yeah. years old. Yeah. Um, so, like, all my friends hunted and mm -hmm. shot, and, but it was, like, you know, you go out to the desert and you shoot shit, like, you blow yeah. stuff up. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't, like, precision um, skills or anything. When I moved to Florida, I had shown an interest in competition shooting. Like, I was like, this looks cool. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really know, like, how you got into it. Right. Um, and then when I moved to Vegas, I, like, within my first couple weeks there, I met some people who shot competitions. And I was like, hey, I really want to learn how to do this. Like, I want to be better at shooting. Will you teach me? And they were like, sure. So, um... I started doing that, and then I started, like, wanting to get good at it, and did do pretty decent for a while, um, until I moved to Missouri and haven't been able to shoot very much, but... I mean, it was it was noticeable, like like I said, you shoot better than most, like, 90% of the dudes, Thanks. like, that pistol stage, you fucking crushed it, yeah. and then you've got a suppressed sub gun that you're rocking underneath <laughs> some barricades, and I was like, 
The fact that you even know how to do those, like, um, dude, I hadn't shot in a year when I sh- when I did that, and like I beat. <laughs> so yeah, it you was kicked here. The shit out of some it dudes, was here, you? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, like they literally own a company where they do like private security and they do firearms training mm-hmm. and i was like i'll do some rifle stuff like cool like we did some pistol stuff and they're like sure the cute little girl I'll, with the tattoo i was like hey i haven't shot in a year like i'm being honest like it's literally been a year since i've really shot anything so and i sure haven't run like a drill like this in a minute and so i watched the first dude go and so i'm like all right like so that i just fucking went i fucking i bruised the fuck out of myself like i went hard in the paint you but i beat his time you blazed <laughs> i did yeah, and totally doing the unconventional shooting positions, too. I was like... Yeah, which was... That was, like, what I wasted the most time on, because I was like, what mm-hmm. the fuck? It? <laughs> yeah, like, how to get I the can't angle. see. Mm-hmm. I was like, can't... Oh, all right, but, yeah, I beat, I beat their time, so that was kind of... That made me feel good. I was like, oh, I haven't completely lost it. <laughs> no, not at all. I was like, holy shit, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah like... There's been a few my a few my female friends in the... Like, N- like Nikki, she hasn't been on the podcast yet. She's going to be on the podcast. But uh, LaSalle and Kendall and a few others, like, they're, they are very, they shoot really, really well, which is what I really like about them. And we always talk shit. It, it's one of my favorite things is when girls show up into a male-dominated sport and kick the fuck out of guys <laughs> at their own shit. Like, I, I love it. I lo- it's my favorite thing to watch. Dudes just, like, get pissed and, like, <laughs> so mad. And I'm just like, yeah, bro, you just, that's I was awesome. never the best, but I shot with, like, some really amazing shooters, mm-hmm. which I think is one of the re- – well, I don't know. Las I know Vegas has a good – there's a dude, good community. a huge yeah. shooting community, like yeah. really great. So, like, I don't know if you know a lot about competition shooters, but, mm-hmm. like, J.J. Rakaza, who mm-hmm. I'm now, like, good friends with, like, yeah. so um, he helped me a lot. Um, yeah. And then there's, like, um, guys that worked at his – when he owned a gun store in Vegas, mm-hmm. like, they worked for him. But they're also, like, sponsored by, like, Terran Tactical and, like, really good, like, PCC shooters, but good shooters in general. Like, they're all, like, Filipino um, but they're awesome. And so, like, I shot with them, and I, um, I think that helped a lot. Like, when you, which is, like, or any skill set, if you're with people who are a lot better than you, yeah. like, either you rise to the occasion or you fucking quit. And I was like, I just want to get better. So, right. like, I want to soak up everything. Like, every time we do something, I'm going to ask you questions. I want you to correct me. I mm-hmm. want help. Like, let's do this. So, and JJ always was like, you're just, like, naturally. He always says that. It's so nice. Like, he's like, you're, like, naturally talented at this. Like, if you actually put in the time, like, you could be really fucking good. And you I'm like, could. You could. I, I agree just with that. need his His time, time was not wasted on you. Yeah. So, um, he actually bought him and his wife bought those buffalo paintings. Those were sick. Yeah. So, I hand-delivered those to them in Florida, which was really cool. Um, they're such great people. I love them. Um, and he's obviously, like, an incredible shooter. So. Yeah. Yeah, I was pretty fortunate to get to learn from people like that. Yeah, I used to shoot with Taryn back in the day, and, like, Mike Voigt was, like, one of my oh, guys, like, yeah. before he passed. Like, Mike was a phenomenal dude and, like, yeah. took me into his ring. I was still on active duty, this, like, young Marine, and I'd go and shoot with him, and he would take me into his wing and help me, and, like, he really upped my shooting game substantially. Yeah, Mike Voigt, legend. Awesome. Yeah, Fuck. literally Unf- a legend. Unfortunately passed from cancer, but, like, mm-hmm. fucking phenom- phenomenal human. And fantastic shooter. I love that. Yeah. So, great dude. But, yeah, he's super talented at that. So, and then, like, I I noticed you're, like, whipping around a blade. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like knives. I mean, you should, (laughs) considering your heritage, you should love edged weapons. (laughs) So, considering your your blood. so I I do like knives. I think I I used to, like, I don't even, like, before I could own a gun, I had knives. Um, I mean, I lived in, Mm -hmm. I've been through some, like, crazy shit mm-hmm. um so like having a weapon on me s- always seems like a good idea it's like an excellent idea yeah and um blades are you easy probably have one on you right now don't i you? have a couple you have a, you got a gun on you right now too yeah fucking i'm so proud of you <laughs> always I'm so fucking proud of you right now that's awesome <laughs> Fuck okay. yeah always so i've got a blade like and a gun two blades and a gun good for you yeah one for each hand just good. in case like what if i can't mm-hmm. get to one of yeah yeah so both fixed blades or or uh, one folder and one fix? they're both folders okay yeah i like i like carrying folders and pockets mm-hmm. so have you have you been trained professionally in blade use nope okay i just uh um, i know some people oh that's cool yeah. i would love that okay yeah, I, we can I know a couple of people who always offer to like send me videos and stuff which i try to like watch on my mm-hmm. own but i would love to learn like hands-on because I, I think with anything watching a video you can only learn so much like mm-hmm. i'd much rather learn anything hands-on i think it's a thousand times better. Correct. Yeah. And have you done any? Have you done any like ECQC classes with like combatives and like weapons retention and contact shooting and stuff um, like that? 
like sort retention of retention shooting. Yeah, sort of, but not a lot. Okay. Most of like my shooting was really s- towards uh, competition mm-hmm. for like for a while because like that's what I was focused on. Um, and I've taken a couple of classes and courses for the other, but not a lot. Okay. Yeah. I also know some really remarkable humans that teach yeah. that stuff too. So yeah. yeah, I'll have to get I'll get I'll get you plugged into all of that. But That'd I think great. it's great that you take your safety as your own responsibility and that you are yeah i just don't ever want to be a victim again because i've been one so many times and i i say that all the time like i just i don't want to i want to i always think like i if i can't control a situation i at least want to be able to control my capabilities in it Mm -hmm. and i don't want to be like weak or yeah like play victim or unprepared like so I just want to try to prepare myself for like the worst case scenario all the time so so that doesn't happen again yeah no yeah and I I think that it's something that everyone should do yeah I'm surprised how many people don't like I have a lot of friends and even friends who like guns but like don't carry aren't like aware of their surroundings Mm -hmm. like when we go out to eat and stuff like I think that's really strange I have usually a I have a uh, a flashlight, a tourniquet, a uh, pistol, yeah, yeah, and a fucking fixed blade, and then like a multi tool yeah. on me usually every day. Yeah, if I carry my backpack, I usually have I always have like my fixed blades mm-hmm. on my bags usually because they're bigger and they're just like mm-hmm. a little harder to carry on me. Um, and then I have a tourniquet in my bag all the time. I have a med kit in my truck. I have two, so I keep them in each of my cars. But I try to take it with me if like I go hiking or do something. But I always have a tourniquet in my bag, mm. just in case. Yes, as you should. Yeah. Because you never know when a fucking king cobra is gonna fucking bite something. Yeah, but you don't need a tourniquet <laughs> for that. I know. I'm just being a. S- I'm just jo- just jokes over here, people. Just jokes. <laughs> so, okay. Well, that's that's a fucking great journey. Then so then so, now recently you you're here in, in Missouri. Mm-hmm. You came here from Vegas. Yes. Okay, another dude talking to. No, kinda? Okay. I uh. No, I, I liked living in Vegas okay. um, a lot, actually. Mm-hmm. Like, I loved all the outdoor stuff. Like, I lived really close to Red Rock Canyon. I could drive three hours ago to Zion and go hiking. Vegas is great, yeah. Great, yeah. There's It's beautiful. Um, mm-hmm. Like, food's great. Gyms are open 24-7. Yep. I had my shooting community. Like, there really yeah. wasn't. I liked the shop I worked at. Um, I did, there wasn't really anything wrong with me living there. But I lived there for three years. And at that three-year point, I looked at my life and I went, if I stay here, literally nothing will change it's not conducive for growth your career won't change your personal life like like a lot of people I was around like I love them but like a lot of them are older than me Mm -hmm. or in a different place in life to where like they're very happy and complacent in their lives and like good for them if that's where you want to be right but like if they're like 40 married kids happy with their careers cool Mm -hmm. I was like 29 um I'm like I'm not there yet I'm single I still want to grow. I want to, like, get better at my career. I want to do other things. So I was like, if I stay here, I just know I'm going to look back in a year or two or three and be like, why has nothing fucking changed? Mm -hmm. So I was like, you got to change something. And I was dealing with, like, a lot of health issues for the last, like, five or so. I don't know. It's been, like, five years now. But Mm -hmm. I was dealing with a lot of health issues. And at that point, um, the First Form is a company that's based out of St. Louis. They're a sports supplement company. I've been with them a long time. Yeah, they're a very prominent company. Yeah. So I've been with them for like eight years, yeah. um, and the owner is a good friend of mine. I love him, but he was like, "Hey, there's a doctor here. I think you should meet. He might be able to help you with some of your shit." Mm-hmm. So I met that met him, and he was like, "Hey, I think we can help you, but it'll be a lot easier to treat you in St. Louis." And I was like, "Well, I can work anywhere. And first form is there. I have some friends there. Like, I can live anywhere for a couple years. Like, yeah, it's a good attitude yeah. to have." And I was like, "You know, I, I know I'll be that. busy. Like, I think I'll probably be busier in Missouri. I always get emails from people like near, close to St. Louis, just because mm-hmm. of like first formy people and stuff. So I was like, I'll open a private studio out there and like go get treated and like see how this goes. Um, so I that's why I moved." Which has been an interesting journey too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so let's <laughs> let's go ahead and dial that in because you walk you walked in here and and uh, sat down while Matt and I were chatting and joined the conversation and it steered quickly to your <laughs> shop burning to the ground recently. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean to laugh, but Dude, considering so everything that else that you've you've told me Dude, here in the last hour it or was so so, cr- so like 
just like even this last couple years, like moving, deciding to move during, well, before a pandemic, mm-hmm. pandemic happens, can't move. Yeah. Um, I moved here and the first month I was here, like there was like eight dead birds at my house. Like mm-hmm. birds would fly into my window. They would like show up on my door. So just dead birds everywhere. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck did I walk into a horror movie? And then my cat broke my hand. Yeah. Like the first month. Your tattooing I hand. Uh, yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. How I did have, your like, cat break your hand? Yeah, this is also a fun... This is, like, freak crazy... My luck. I, I literally like the shit that happens to me. I'm like, how is uh, so I'm much get, of this? I'm going to have to take you to the medicine man over in Custer Dude, and no, get No, I was fucking... actually told by a psychic that I'm, like, fucking cursed. Um, not because of me, but, like, because of my mom's side of the family. Like, she's fucking horrible, and her whole side of the family is fucked up. Well, the, all my whole family is, but she was like, your my, mom's... Mine too, so... Yeah, yeah she's okay. like, your mom's... Someone on that side of your family did something horrible to someone, and they were cursed. And I'm like, that makes so fucking sense. And, like, it's following you. And I was like, of course it would. <laughs> Why would it follow the only, like, decent person to come out of that fucking family? We're just going to take you to the medicine man over in Custer in South I Dakota. I really do need that. Um, my, my uncle's friends with him. We'll yeah. just get, we'll get you sage. Perfect. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, like, my cat <laughs> is... <laughs> apparently very territorial and i didn't realize that's like he's weirdly obsessed with me i always make jokes that like if he was a human he'd wear my skin mm-hmm. like fucking hello clarice yes yeah, yeah. I, i'm shocking <laughs> yeah i love um, silence of the lamb yeah so i move into this house and it like has a yard and like the living room to the backyard is like floor to ceiling windows sliding doors Mm -hmm. so i spend a lot of time outside because i'm like still can't work yet i'm trying to get the shop going like um, it's kind of a nightmare. So I'm like outside and this cat, like stray cat, someone's cat comes by and I sit outside and I pet it and I'm like, Oh sweet little baby. And my cat is sitting inside watching. And he's like, bitch, what the fuck I just didn't doing? realize. Yeah. He was stewing. pissed. Fucking pissed. So like a couple days of this <clears> happens, <throat> cat comes back and I'm like, Oh, well maybe I'll give it some treats today. Oh, and my. I like slide open the door, like Barely, like not enough for anything to get through. So I think, and my cat sees his opportunity and fucking shoots out like a missile and starts beating the fuck out of this other cat. And he's not allowed outside ever. So he's like chases us up one corner of the yard and I run out there and then it gets chased down the other side of the yard and the cat jumps over the fence. And I'm like, if he goes over the fence, I'll never catch him. But he stops right at the fence line and I swoop him up really fast and he's in like fight mode. So literally like a snake bite, he fucking tags me um, and then like shrivels up like, oops, not not meant for you. But he has like really sharp canines Mm -hmm. and it went through this little this hole right here. His tooth went through the top of my hand (laughs) and it was so deep that I looked into the bone before the blood started coming out. Oh, yeah, it was a good puncture wound. So I throw him inside and, like, vomit immediately because I was like, that pain wasn't – I have a high pain tolerance and I've, like, been through some shit. And I was like, that pain was so unreal. Um, So I, like, throw up and then I'm, like, irrigating my wound out, cleaning it. But cats have really gross mouths. Mm -hmm. So uh, it starts, like, rigoring. So I go to the fucking emergency room and they, like, do an x-ray and it has fractured. And they have to give me a tetanus shot and, like, put him on rabies watch. And so I'm like, my like hands all wrapped up and I can't use it. And I'm like, this is such a great way to start my first like move to Missouri. (laughs) This is great. (laughs) Fucking broken hand. (laughs) Can't work. This is so good. So like all that that happens. It's a nightmare to get my shop open. Shop gets open in like April. So I had it from like April 2021 Mm -hmm. to June of 2022. In June of 2022, I get a a, a phone call. I didn't even get a phone call. My best friend sent me a news article in the morning and was like, I think this is your shop. <laughs> and I went, what? Burned to the ground. Third alarm fire, <laughs> which is really rare. So was this, is this the place? This was commonplace. Commonplace. Was this the, the same place that you had pictures of on the commonplace yes. instagram yes so i put that gorgeous yep i remodeled the whole space i put like oh, I 30 you... 40 grand into oh, remodeling God. the whole thing like literally it looked like garbage before i did ceiling lights walls fucking fixtures like literally everything i did like a lot of it myself too to try to save money like 
all the furniture and stuff. I put so much fucking time and effort into that. It part. looked gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah. It was absolutely amazing. Yeah. Like um, it looked like a professional grade like art gallery. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was. It was. Um, it was great. Yeah. And um. So that burned. Burned to the fucking ground. Like that fire out of all of the businesses and there's like some apartments in that like close to that building too out of all of them mine was the one that burnt to nothing and most of the other places it was like a lot of smoke damage and stuff but mine was literally completely destroyed like a hundred percent loss is what they told me and i saw it so they were correct um, they said it was like perfect. Again, I'm really lucky. The fire started at the bottom level because I was like, I wanted to make sure I'm like that they're not going to try to hold me liable that it started up here. But some they think someone started a fire. They think it might have been arson. So the fire started at like the bottom outside, like right corner. And then because of the way like my windows are set up, as soon as the windows got blown out from like the heat, it like sucked all of that shit mm -hmm. in there and then just torched, torched completely destroyed um which is great so that happened like a couple weeks ago and l life's so good my favorite part of the story though is that you which we haven't <laughs> dove into this part yet but you said fuck it and you wanted an international adventure <laughs> anyway you're like neat can't do anything i'm going on vacation anyway bye well i had booked a trip to turkey in December. That's when I paid for my flights and hotel and I had booked the whole thing. The fire started on Friday or like Friday was when it happened. Saturday, Sunday was when I was supposed to leave for my trip to Turkey. At first I was like, I'm not going. Like can't go. That might like can't can't do it. And I like called to try to cancel it and they're like, We can't give you your money back. Like it's too late, like for your flights and your hotel, like you can't get your money back. And I went, Well, fuck. And people were like, You should go and I felt like guilty, which I think is such a weird like I still am like such a weird feeling. No, you did exactly what you should do. What I would have done in this exact same situation, I would have been like, okay, well, I'm going to go on vacation. Yeah. Well, I'll I mean, I'll deal with this shit. At that point, I, I was like, there's literally nothing I could have done. Like, I have to wait. I can't get, there's nothing to recover. It's, it's like, gone. it'd be different if I had, like, could clean stuff up or, mm -hmm. like, some of it was, like, salvageable. It's literally ash. There's yeah. nothing left. So mm -hmm. I was like, there's nothing I can do. I already, like, I'll literally have a week where I was supposed to be on vacation that I'll sit mm -hmm. at home and be fucking depressed and miserable and won't be able to do nothing. Um, so I was like, or you can just still go on your fucking vacation you already paid a bunch of money for. Mm -hmm. So I went on the vacation and it was, it was great. I mean, it was like bittersweet, obviously. I was still stressed the fuck out the whole time, but it was like a nice like breath away from the fucking madness for a minute. So turkey's beautiful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that in itself okay you i'm gonna pick on my family because i like to because they're <laughs> not my favorite humans but they don't ever fucking travel leave go like they never go anywhere and i'm like and then they have all these opinions all the time and i'm like how the fuck are you gonna have an opinion on something you've never even like been outside like you're too big of a scaredy cat by scaredy cat i mean fucking coward to yep. get to go anywhere like to go anywhere like, I've been to 30 countries. I've filled up two passports. And, like, the experiences that I got, sometimes people were trying to kill me. Luckily, that didn't happen. But, like, some of the countries I've been to, I've, like, had amazing experiences and had changes in my perspective and experienced, like, life stuff that really formed me or changed me in a way that was, like, that was invaluable. Mm -hmm. And and um, I, feel f I feel sorry for people that are scared to go travel and see what the rest of the world's like. It, I, I I can't even fathom it. I it's used so to be that person. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, dig into that for me and tell me like what was the ch what was the point that you were like, fuck it, I'm just gonna solo adventure. Yeah. Um. I never I never really been out of the country until I moved to Vegas. So 2017, mm -hmm. I hadn't been out of the country or I I went to Australia for right maybe right yeah 2017 mm -hmm. December I think I went to Australia for the first time for tattoo convention and then to work and uh but before that I hadn't been out of the country never really traveled never took vacations um and a part of that was like I was worried about not working and then there was another part where like I didn't have anyone to go with me like I couldn't find people to go with me and I was scared to do stuff alone um I was like that was like a, a thing I had an issue with for a really long time like I didn't think a lot of it came from like growing up like if you'd see someone eating alone at a restaurant, my family would be like, oh, that's so fucking sad. Like, 
that person must not have any friends or anyone who cares about them. Like, how fucking depressing. How embarrassing. No, they're the happiest people in the world because they don't have a I'm shitty like, family. Maybe sometimes it's sad. Like, maybe, like, an old man sitting by himself because his wife just died, like, and, yeah. he, does, and he wants to go out to eat because he needs conversation from someone. Like, that's kind of sad. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, some people just... You know, like, now I eat all all the time by myself, like, mostly. I'm, like, alone 99% of the time, but I'm, like, I'm just fucking hungry. (laughs) I got to eat. But, um, yeah, so, like, 2017, like, I moved to Vegas, and, like, my first real solo trip, I was going to Hawaii and, like, had this condo to stay at, and it was pretty much free, and I was, like, trying to find people to go with me, and I had asked, like, a few friends, like, the few people I was, like, wanted to maybe spend a week with. And, like, I was, like, hey, it's free. Like, you and your husband can come. Like, you can bring whoever. Like, you just have to pay your flight and then, like, food and stuff when you're there. And, like, no one could go. And I was, like, well, I'm just not going to go then. Like, Mm -hmm. that's what I kept thinking. I was, like, no one will go with me. I'm just not going to go. And then I was, like, it's free. Why would I not go? And I've never done that before. So I was, like, booked my flight and then went to Hawaii. And I have family there. So, like, I went by myself and it was, like, the best trip I ever had. Because I'd been a bunch of times when I was growing up because my dad's Hawaiian and we would go on family vacations sometimes and it was fucking miserable every time. Like they're Mm -hmm. like, we're going to sit at a pool type of people when the ocean is right next to you and like doesn't and they're lazy and shitty. And um, so like I went and I did all the things that I wanted to do. Like I got up at sunrise. I like went hiking. I went cliff jumping. I fucking did all the things and and I ate where I wanted to eat. (laughs) And I went horseback riding, and I'm like, this is, it was so amazing. And I was like, it was liberating, because I was like, you can do whatever the fuck you want alone. So then, like, Christmas of that same year rolled around, and I didn't want to spend it alone, or with, so I, like, booked a flight to Budapest, and I'd never been to Europe, so I was like, you'll go to Budapest for Christmas by yourself. And I did that, and it was also amazing. That's awesome. I love that. But why Budapest? Um, I I was on a plane one time, Mm -hmm. and it had, like... Uh, travel videos like so it was like one of those like I don't know like the seat TVs Mm -hmm. and it was like playing random videos and there was one about Budapest and I watched it and I went Budapest looks so cool (laughs) it's so beautiful I would have never thought and then I looked it up and it had a lot of stuff about like really safe for solo travelers and I was and then I looked up like Christmas time and they have like really pretty like um, Christmas markets and there's like a lot of history there and um, so I was like and like yeah, I was just like, I love history, and I lo- this sounds great. And it's, like, kind of a weird place. Like, everyone goes to, like, London, and Budapest sounds way cooler. So I went, and it was – I would go back. I loved Budapest. I would love to go back Yeah, for I, have sure. not, I have not been there, but it does look pretty it's cool. It's amazing. Yeah. The food's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so much, like, culture and history, like, with, like, World War Two and, like, mm-hmm. the Danube River and, like, there's on the, the bathhouses. Like, they're so mm-hmm. cool. So – I would def I would like to go when it's not Christmas time, cause, but I th- it was amazing. I loved it. it was like, and no one I didn't talk to anyone for like a whole week, cause like a lot of people didn't speak the language, and I was alone. And like Hungarians aren't like social, like they're no. nice, but they will not go out of their way to talk to you. So like the only people who spoke to me were like my waiters, <laughs> briefly. <laughs> so for like a whole week, no one talked to me. But I spent like Christmas Day watching the sunrise, like by myself in Budapest and I was like this is great this is wonderful and I didn't feel sad and I was like you're so much more capable than you fucking thought you were and now I travel alone all the time every human is uh yeah so it's disappointing to me and I constantly am like uh I constantly see humans that love to like I don't know be afraid and like just subscribe to fear constantly Mm -hmm. and everything's big and everything's scary I mean just like you going to Turkey by yourself for those of us that are well-traveled, we know that Turkey is a very secular country. It's a NATO country. They're an ally. It's in a, f- you know, they're n- there's nothing super crazy. They don't always make great foreign policy decisions, but they're, it's a pretty friendly country. And it's they're not, friendly. it's not up, up, it's not like other parts, like we were talking about Egypt. Yeah. Like it's I not. I would not go alone to Egypt. Yeah. 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 Egypt's not great. Um, a lot of the Middle East is like, it's, it's problematic, but Turkey is very safe, but to the unindoctrinated and the uneducated, they're like, you know, average Joe American. They're People like were terrified when I said I was going to Egypt. Um, oh, yeah. Just like, and I um, was originally going to go with a girlfriend and she backed out and then my sister invited herself, which was interesting. Um, ugh, probably never doing that again. But 
Um, but I was like, I just didn't want to be there alone. Yeah. And even though I, I booked it through like a tour company, because yeah. I like looked, I did a lot of research on like the best way to do this mm -hmm. and like the safest way and like to make me feel the most comfortable. And so I booked it through this tour company. It was private. So you have like a tour guide and a driver yeah. and then just like whoever you're with. And it was the best way to do it uh, for sure. I never once felt like unsafe, but if I had tried to do everything on my own, like when I went to Turkey, I planned everything myself. Um, I drove, I did everything and, um, I wouldn't have done that in Egypt, but people were like, I can't believe you're going yeah. like, it's so dangerous. And like, I didn't ever feel like unsafe, but I also did it the right way. But I'm like, I don't, is it like, is it worse than Mexico? You bitches go to fucking Mexico all the time. And if you step off a resort, you get fucking trafficked immediately. Like the cartel mm -hmm. is everywhere. Like it's really not less safe than Mexico is. Mexico is pretty fucking dangerous. People still go there. Yeah. Mexico is very dangerous. Yeah, it's and super fucking yes, dangerous. My, one of my really good friends, Nick Betts, and his girlfriend, Nikki, she's Canadian, and they live in San Diego, some of my favorite humans on the planet, and they adventure all over the fucking... They, they, they don't care. Yeah. I mean, they, they just go and they go do it, and it's they, they seem to do just fine. Yeah, I feel like if you're smart mm -hmm. and safe about wherever you go, like, there's... Just have some situational awareness. You would think. Mm -hmm. And, like, cultural awareness. Like, yeah. I have... Huge. Like, that's super important. Super like, huge. Yeah. Like, when I went to Egypt, I was very aware of, like, hey, like, I'm a girl in a Muslim country. I am Western. I have tattoos. Like, I'm going to be as covered up as possible. And it, even if I don't need to, like, some of the areas that are, like, touristy areas, like, we don't... They don't care as much. But, like, I felt way more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm getting less stares. I'm getting less negative attention. Did you cover your face or did you just wear a... Just a, I wore, like, a scarf around my hair most yeah. of the time or just, like, on me. Because they don't really care. They know, like, they are pretty aware that you're not Muslim. But it's just, like, a respect thing of, like, covering up more than, like, you being a part of their religion. Mm -hmm. That's how it seemed. And, like, with the men and how they treat women, being more covered and, like, not showing... Your mm -hmm. body is important. Like, I wore loose clothes. I never showed cleavage. Like, I didn't want, like, my tattoos, like, they just brings attention anyways. So I was like, if I can wear long sleeves as much as possible, that's what mm -hmm. I'm going to do. Which is also why I went in February and well, not they do in henna. Th sometimes they do henna on their hands. So, like, yeah. there's tattoos on your hands probably not as big a deal as not you'd think. Yeah. But, like, neck, like, and then, like, sometimes it would get hot and I would, like, um, roll my sleeves up and then I, I would get a lot like not like bad comments but they, they, they obviously more comments like oh I like your tat like well nice tattoos so mm -hmm. I'm like I just the least amount of attention I can mm -hmm. get like that's how I like my life anyways like I really try I really don't like attention and I'm sure people maybe don't wouldn't like think that from my social media but I fucking do not like being the center of attention I no, hate well, it yeah uh, and in some of their like in some of those countries like they don't what people don't realize is like Yes, no, in the as m in you know Muslim countries in general, they do not treat women mm. at all well at all with no. any type of respect. Yeah, you're but it's like goats and then women. Right, <laughs> yeah. that's where you're Correct. on the tiers of how res how much respect you get. Correct. Yeah. So what a lot of people don't realize is like in their culture, like if you're uncovered, you're being a whore. Yeah. Or you are a whore. And it's game on. Yeah. Well, like I got. They're, they're cleared so hot to do whatever they want to you. Tour guide. Mm -hmm. So I think this is like very enlightening. So we had like the same guide for most of it. We had two guides at one mm -hmm. point because we like I did a Nile cruise. So at one point mm -hmm. we had another one. But the main guide that we had in like Giza and Cairo, um, he was half Mo um, Egyptian and mm -hmm. he was half Italian, but he was Muslim. And he's from Egypt, grew up there. Um, and at, at, he was super nice and normal most of the time throughout the tour. Like he would make like little, like mm, sexist jokes or like comments about like um, us, his mm -hmm. like two pretty girls or whatever. And then, but like towards the end, like literally when our tour was technically over, we were driving back from Alexandria to our hotel, and he started making weird comments towards me mm -hmm. about like. Uh, like, oh, you're like a Ferrari. You're like so beautiful and perfect to me. And then he would say stuff like, um, of like, well, you're not a virgin, so I can't marry you, but like, I can sleep, I can have sex with you, like shit like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is great. I don't feel uncomfortable at, at all. all. Yeah. And then we like say like, how long has it been since you've been with a man? And I'm like, that's so fucking inappropriate. Mm -hmm. Like, this is so. He was like, you should come. And then he was like, you should come to my house for tea. We should have tea. And I'm like, you should get the fuck away. From but I'm like. Again, like, he's still... Was this in Egypt? This or? is in Egypt. In Cairo. Yeah, in yeah. Cairo. It was, like, our last night there, 
And, like, he's still, like, our tour guide, like, the mm-hmm. person we deal with. So I was, like, we still had to get our COVID test because this is still during, like, COVID. Yeah. And um, our our driver still had to pick us up for the airport. So I'm, like, I don't want to aff- – I don't, I don't want to, like, make w- – usually I would be, like, go fuck yourself. Mm-hmm. But I'm, like, in another country, I'm a woman. I still need this person to help us. So I'm, like, oh, no, thank you. Like, oh, it's inappropriate. Please, no, thank you. And then, like, it was – but I'm, like, this is – this is this is how they treat mm-hmm. women and like that was like a mild form for sure because like but i'm like and he, he would say like yeah like if, they, if you're a widow and and you're muslim like you're trash like you mm-hmm. can't remarry because you've been tainted yeah. you're not a virgin anymore they don't fucking mm-hmm. want you yeah and i'm like that's so crazy mm-hmm. but i mean like i i'm just like i don't maybe not agree with it but i try to like be respectful of other cultures so that's where I'm at with it. Yeah, no, you have to. Yeah. You have to. You're not in the United States anymore. You do not get to Yeah. You don't get to have your opinion anymore. You just don't. You yeah. get to you get to go there, be a guest, a great guest yeah. in somebody else's country. For sure. And you handled that situation probably the best way you could have. Yeah. Because yeah, it might have if you would have complained or you would have like made a big deal about it, like it would have gone. It would it wouldn't have gone your way. Absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't like it's just I mean and again I was like chalked it up, I'm like in his eyes, he's not doing anything wrong. Mm-hmm. So, like, this is a different culture. They treat women. And, like, I mean, there's dudes in America who would probably do the same fucking thing. Like, well, I can fuck you. You want to. Well, you're an infidel. So, like, you can, he true. can. You're a non-believer. So, he can, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, it was, like, it was. And I'm, like, I'm aware of, like, why the, you would treat me or anyone this way. But, like, don't like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't like it. But it is what it is. Yeah. There's some parts of the world where you're in. I can have a great time. You're going to have better time other places. Yep. Like Turkey. I'm yep. sure your was your Turkey experience like a thousand times better. Polar opposite, right? Yeah. And yeah. it's crazy too cuz like they are still very like Islamic country, mm-hmm. but way more modern like um the people were super way nicer. Like I mean the people in Egypt were nice too actually, mm-hmm. but like um e- Turkey, like they were so nice and very friendly mm-hmm. and like really respectful. Um, and like you could walk around in like pretty normal clothes and like you didn't get a ton of unwanted attention mm-hmm. or like negative attention, which was, I was surprised because at first I wasn't really sure. And then the longer I was there, I felt like I more comfortable wearing like more normal clothes. Yeah. I had a very similar experience in Jordan and in, um, Dubai. Uh, oh, Jordan. I really yeah. want to. Yeah. I've been to Petra. It's pretty, it's, yeah. it's awesome. That was what I was going to do Egypt and Petra, but their borders were closed when mm. I went. And so I will be going, but cause I want to, yeah, the treasury and uh, I want to see it so bad. Mm-hmm. The Red Sea right there is like one of the most, Yeah, I snorkeled in that oh. and it was amazing. Like the water is like, that's some of the most clear water I've ever been in, like ocean yeah. water I've ever been in in my life. Like uh, the visibility was easily hundred plus feet insane like you could just see forever and i'm like <sighs> down there 30 feet checking things out like so i spent like a whole day snorkeling the red sea and it was it was remarkable it's definitely on my list yeah. yeah yeah it's a great it's a great time so yeah there's I, i'm glad that you realize that like you know we're here for a limited amount of time and it's it's time to like get your adventure on literally my whole like goal in life now is like to live <laughs> Yeah. Like, have experiences over everything. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to try new things. I want to, like, push my limits. I want to travel. I want to I wanna do all the things. I like having, like, fun. But I also like, like, getting out of my, like, comfort zones mm-hmm. and boundaries and, like, just doing stuff. So, I love, like, I try to do that. I was, like, I spent so much of my life not doing anything. <laughs> so, now I'm, like, got to make up for it. Like, you don't know how long you're going to be here. Yeah, yeah, correct. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well. We're almost at two hours, so oh, like shoot. that was a good, <laughs> that was a good solid effort. It was okay. So, well, thanks for coming on. What do you want to ra- let's wrap with some like, well, first of all, let's talk about where people can find you. Let's talk definitely talk about War Party, mm-hmm. and then good, good mom advice for the for the females out there. Um, so Instagram is pretty much like the best or only thing I really use, um, and same for War Party. So like my I have two Instagrams. My professional page is Marissa Loren Art, and then my personal page is Marissa Dot Loren, and then War Party Movement and War Party Ranch on Instagram as well. They also have a website you can find at WarPartyMovement.com. And there are five hundred one c three that you can donate to. Yeah, correct? for okay. yeah, so five hundred one c three for War Party Ranch, and you can donate. 
Okay, good. And then War Party Movement is not the nonprofit, but it is it is have all the merch and all that proceeds go to actually funding like rescues for um, a lot of Native women, but women in general who need help from bad situations. So both really good causes and like kind of all around the same thing. Yeah, awesome, awesome cause. Yeah. Um, advice. Oh gosh, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of like one thing I would for women. Yeah, I just think you have a really good lens and a perspective through all of the stuff, all the shit you've been through that you talked about. And then, like, your attitude towards, you know, individual responsibility towards your own safety. Yeah. And then, like, and then I you're just, like, tra your individual, like, solo travel. Yeah. I think a really important piece of advice I like to give to people all the time is, like, be comfortable being alone and, like, learn the difference between being alone and being lonely. Because mm -hmm. I feel like that's the first step to being, like, independent. People are so scared of doing things alone or sitting in their like loneliness and that fear that comes from that, that they become codependent. Um, they get in bad situations with the wrong people. So I think like learning to be alone and like liking who you are and finding that your own company is your favorite first so that when you are around people, whether it's friends, romantic, familiar, that you want them to be there, you don't need them. It's the most valuable thing that I've ever learned in my adult life. Is Absolutely. Ex is, is exactly what you just said. Yep. It's not a mistake that my Instagram handle is Lone Element. Yeah. It's not a mistake. Yeah. So, You yeah. actually cultivate a better, stronger group yeah. of individuals who actually have your best interests in mind, too, mm -hmm. when you stop allowing the wrong people in because you don't just need to fill space. Correct. So it's actually like one of the most necessary things you can do, I think. Yeah, I mean, knuckle down and deal with that fear and that uncomfortableness in the initial yeah. stages of, like, you know, dealing with you being alone. Yep. Because once you, once you get past that, once you grow through that, you're... It's it, liberating. Super liberating, <laughs> and you're so free. Yep, literally. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you said it best when you are, when you're your own best company. Yep. Yeah, awesome. I think that's fantastic advice. Okay, well, that wraps up this week. Thanks for joining us, and we will catch you next time on the Lone Element Podcast. Peace. Okay, people. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, that episode with Marissa, she's a fantastic human and just lovely and has had a fucking really, really, really interesting life. And, uh, you know, sometimes it gets hard to, you know, unpack, you know, trauma from the past, but it's it's healthy for you. It's good. You know, those of us that have had enough trauma that have had to go through therapy, myself included, extensive therapy, we know that 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 talking about it and letting those feelings be what they are and dealing with them and processing them in a healthy, safe way through discussion is it's, it's cathartic and it's healing. So, uh, thanks to Marissa for being so transparent and sharing her, you know, some of the tough, tough parts of things that she's lived through. Like that's really, really commendable. I love it when people can just put their cards on the table and they give zero fucks about the judgment from others and they can, they've, they've reached a place in their journey where they can process through things healthy. I think it's fucking awesome. So hats off to her. Really enjoyed my time talking to her. I hope you guys love that podcast and uh, tune in because we've got, we're going to keep on trucking and we're going to see you guys next week on our weapons free Wednesday until then. Peace, 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 peace.